Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, we are live with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, following up Bargain Bin, where I know they're uh, rolling around doing quite a lot of stuff there. Uh, I actually never really played the Katamari game, so it's interesting kind of seeing... Uh, I didn't know they balled up the universe. Just kind of leading off of that. Anyway, with our start for even the game, I just want to remind everyone that information for all of our Hotfix shows is available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. And from there, you can find more information about some of your runs and just the weekly shows in general. So this week on Speedruns from the Crypt, uh, we're going to have a special focus. Now, if you guys don't know uh, about, well, I guess in particular, I'm quite a big fan of a certain franchise of games known as the Clock Tower Games. Uh, that's where this title, uh, the music comes from for our intro that we've been playing every time. It's where the shirt comes from, and it's where my own speedrunning roots come from. So, that being said, I'm a very big fan of this era of gaming in this franchise, and what better way to show the appreciation than by showing all of you uh, the full series of Clock Tower Games. Uh, so today we're going to be exploring all of that, how they intertwine, and how the story doesn't make very much sense at all. But it's still a great series of games, and we're going to be going in chronological order uh, for your enjoyment. And we're featuring uh, different versions of the different games uh, to the best of their capabilities. Uh, to start us off, what better place than the beginning? Uh, we're going to go to the beginning of the Clock Tower Murders, uh, with the intro of the Scissor Man, Bobby Barros, with the original Clock Tower SNES, with our runner, THK573. Feel free to take it away. All right, thank you, Ignatius. Uh, so yeah, I'm THK, and I am going to be running the A ending. Um, ending A, I believe, is what we have on the layout. Um, this is the best canon ending, and I'm going to preface this by saying this is a very RNG-heavy game. <laughs> we have a bit of RNG manipulation, but it is not consistent at all. Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, explain it as we go along. Okay, right. so, ready? Um, Your call. Three, two, one, go. So, the nice thing about this game is that it has a quick start feature, so you don't have to watch the intro every single time that you... Uh, uh, what is it? Play the game. Uh, start the, start, yeah, start the game. Excuse me. All good. So, so the very first thing that we're going to try and get is a key to the West Wing here. Um, I am going to reset if it doesn't show up here. Just because it's only 30 seconds in and there's not really a reason not to. And it, in typical Clock Tower fashion... <laughs> it's all good. Uh, we'll keep the timer rolling during this because it still counts for the marathon uh, estimate and all that. Um, but why do we have to get this key and like, is there anywhere else you can get the key? There is one other place, uh, but it takes like at least a couple of minutes to get it. Uh, you have to start, you have to start a chase, which we're going to be going through anyway, but it involves a little bit more of a fetch quest than just getting this box right here in this room. Um, it's, it's just a little bit faster to just reset over it rather than, uh, going up, going upstairs to get it. If it, if it does take me, like, a couple minutes, though, I will just... Oh, wait, never mind. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now we're locked in motion. So, uh, yep. why exactly um, does this game have so much RNG anyway? Um, if I remember right, the creators wanted you to have a different experience throughout the whole... Throughout replays. Uh, there is... Oh... There, there is several different endings in this game, uh... A to H, and then there's also an S ending, which is the best ending in the game. Not canonical, though. I should point that out. And right here, we're actually going to get our first glitch of the game called Action Glitch. Um, Eck, if you want to explain this while I take care of this, go right ahead. Sounds good. So you can see you put the cursor over the stairs. What that's going to do is by clicking on it, uh, he's going to end up running through Bobby so nothing happens. You can see at the end of it that he ended up getting into a little altercation where he can mash the action button to get out of it. Normally, if you run wow. into Bobby here, what tends to happen is you will immediately die. There's no surviving this. But by clicking on the stairs and passing him, at the very least, you can get into a living altercation or you can end up passing him. The reason why this works is because this game prioritizes, prioritizes actions over reactions. So if you are, you know, having a dominant action, Bobby's death animations won't matter anymore. By the way, that was extremely bad luck with Bobby back there. Uh, 
normally you're so, normally you can just like go through, cancel your action, and just keep running past. But he decided to turn around and kind of have an altercation with me. And the panic event lasted a long time too. I mean, in all fairness, he is trying to kill you. I mean, yeah, but cooperation is not a strong suit. True. So I am actually looking for a particular room. This is one of the rooms I want later on, so I'm gonna take note of this, but it's not the room I want right for now. What I want is the library. And from there, we're actually gonna find out which of the ending items I'm going to be shooting for. Uh, there is two ending items in this game. There is, oh boy, this is cool. There is the demon idol, which is the optimal for uh, faster item to get. This is gonna really get on my nerves in this top route, by the way. Oh yeah, I know that feeling all too well, believe me. <laughs> um, but there's also a staff, which is not canonical, and it also just so happens to be the slower uh, option. You don't have any control over which one you get. It's decided when you start the game. Okay, here's the library. And uh, just for reference wise, this game, Bobby here, uh, for anyone wanting to speed on clock tower and go for world record attempts and all that, uh, normally with all the rooms being randomized for this category and all the stuff in general, like the key spawn, the demon idol, uh, the rooms, and later F actors, for ending A, it's a 1 in 160 roughly chance you get a perfect one. And we got staff. Yeah. It's all good. You, I mean, it's a marathon. What, what could you expect? Yeah, this is about par for the course. So I am. So I'm trying to figure out what would be the fastest you, way to do uh, this. Is the room on the right uh, room or no? Um, oh, I need a... Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, no. second um, room on the right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So this is where it kind of gets a bit finicky because in the West Wing, this kind of hallway, series of hallways, there's five doors that we randomize. You have the bathroom, uh, you saw the pink bathroom, we have the crow room, we have the library, we have uh, the piano room, which we did find down here. It's good, I, good we added that reminder. And then one's <laughs> called the empty door. These are always spawned differently because of that fact that they want this game to be an ever-changing experience. Uh, we did get some unfortunate luck, though. We did get a good key. We ended up getting the staff. And the problem is, Jennifer can innately use something called a demon idol, but she doesn't know how to use the staff. I always kind of attribute it, because I know most teenage girls at one point or another know, like always knew demon stuff. So it's just kind of fitting <laughs> that Jennifer also knows this. Uh, also, you'll see me like opening the menu um, a lot, like spamming that item. Uh, that is actually because this game is very laggy. <laughs> um, and for whatever reason, opening and closing the menu just reduces that lag. I don't think we actually know why. But... I'm honestly not works. sure myself. It just kind of works, and I, I'm not going to argue against it. But it does save time. Yeah. The only downside is that doing this will actually kind of keep the camera from scrolling. So if you need to interact with something later on, uh, you kind of have to stop and let the camera scroll. Uh, oh, and sometimes camera stuff just doesn't work. Okay, so I'm actually going to be doing another glitch here called uh, text skipping. Um, if I open the menu on the same frame that I interact with something, it lets you like switch between items and it'll actually override the text that's supposed to pop up, which is important because there's a this game is very text-based. So being able to skip that will save minutes. This is another RNG point, by the way, which is actually not manipulatable to our knowledge, and it's not giving me really good RNG. This doll fight can take anywhere from, like, immediate to, like, 30 seconds of waiting. It's pretty rough sometimes. Uh, I just saw a question in chat. Yes, the, char the character portrait colors do actually indicate something. It is supposed to be representative of basically Jennifer's health. Uh, the way the encounters in this game works... Um, it's like every every encounter kind of slowly deteriorates Jennifer's sanity, I suppose? Is that the best way to say it? Yeah. Sanity? Yeah. Um, and in the state that she's in right now, if I encounter and fail a panic event with Bobby, you actually will end up dying. 
And yeah, like it was mentioned in chat as well, if you are like low enough, it's not exactly just based on colors. I think there's like a hidden meter. Uh, there's times where if you get attacked by Bobby, it can mean an instant death if you are low enough. Like he just instantly goes for it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're wondering as well, if you want to heal, it won't really matter in the speed run because we're honestly not going to be dealing with it very much. But if you want to heal that sanity meter, normally solving puzzles, figuring out progress will be a good way of doing it. Or west, or resting. Mm -hmm. Um. By the way, uh, I I got that. I should not. Normally, um, you don't need that pesticide that I just picked up. That's what that was. It was pe um, a bit of pesticide. But because I'm in a staff game, I will end up having to get a couple of keys and maybe, maybe have some... I'm trying to think of the word for it. I'm going to have to pick up some keys and maybe have a bit of problems with RNG. By the way, these stairs take forever to go up and down. Jennifer has, like, no sense of rushing if, if, unless she's... Well, no, even when she's being chased, she has, like, no sense of urgency. Stairs are a very uh, interesting thing in this game. It's probably the only thing I'd like to change if I ever could, like... Yeah, same here. They take way too long, way too long to go up and down. Wow, really? Oh, and then I miss it. Okay, cool. That was a missed text skip. Um, I want the pesticide for this. As many people know, now we have the uh, the infamous ham in the clock tower game. <laughs> it's a very important ham. It actually really is. Oh um, well, yeah. Is it better to go for the wine here? Or this is safer, I'd a... say. I'd say this is safer. I mean, going for it, if you get it, it works. But I think uh, getting the key first is definitely safer. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, get, get the wine here or try and go through Mary. Oh, you can do both. Uh -oh. Like, worst case scenario, like, just text skipping it should give you okay. good results. Yeah. So, I have to interact with this twice. Best case scenario, usually, is that um, Jennifer passes out and, like, actually drinks this... Wow, that is not a text skip to miss. Um, also, I saw a few things oh. in chat. Oh, you got it? I got it, yeah. Hey, there we go. I saw a few things in chat so far. Yes, this game is based on Dario Argento films, such as Sperria and Phenomena. In fact, the likeness of our character Jennifer here, also named Jennifer, is based on Jennifer Connelly from the movie Phenomena. Though if you look familiar, it probably is to a decent extent. <laughs> Anyway, now we're in jail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a very important text skip to try and get. It is unique from all other text skips in that you just kind of need to be constantly switching before the... Oh, nice. This is a really important text skip to get because there is a lot of dialogue in this cutscene. Oh, hey, at least her friend's here to save us. Uh, maybe not. Oh. It's okay. Um, the best way to counter shotguns is with a plank of wood. Right over the head. It works every time. I hear a part of this game that a lot of people fall into is they try hiding in the box, and then you die because you get shot. Yeah, <laughs> that's a beginner's trap. I did that the first time I played. I was like, hey, like, the box is a good idea. I was like, oh. I guess speaking it was. Speaking of boxes, speaking of boxes, I kind of just walked right through one. Um, that's called box. I think we just call that box skip, don't we? Yeah, or it's a yeah. kind of a variation of like a, just a, kind of like an item skip. Uh, you're able to kind of use the text from an item normally to bypass many things in the game, like uh, holes you're not supposed to be able to walk over, objects you're not supposed to be able to go through. Uh, you can actually break this game quite a lot, which is why we're on the SNES version of this game as well. Mm-hmm. That's the problem with text skips, is that sometimes you don't know if you interacted with the object or not. Oh yeah, that's like one of the only ones in the game, too, that takes forever, and I don't know why. I don't either. So anyway, uh, what I got there was another key, so I have to go all the way back up here. Um, and then get... and I will see a room that I think we just call the mural room. 
Um, it basically this it's basically the room that is going to instruct Jennifer on how to use the staff to get to the end game. Uh, how are we doing on time, by the way? Uh, we're doing pretty good from what I can tell. Uh, once you got the the key in the Mary's room, it was about twelve minutes. You're probably around like thirteen ish. We could probably show off the uh, quote unquote any percent of this game, uh, which is a very <laughs> easy run for anyone to learn. Like if it you want to learn a easy. new speed game, this is very easy. Uh, at least for the any percent. But this category, I think, is pretty hard. But there's one category of this game that um, I think anyone could run. Uh, also, I guess lore-wise, while we're kind of uh, going through this room, just to kind of explain it, uh, you play as someone named Jennifer Simpson, and you and three of your friends have been adopted by someone named Miss Mary Barros. Uh, while you're in the mansion, in your new life, um, you hear a scream, you go to investigate, and then you end up, um, you know, your friends are getting picked off one by one. So depending on what you do throughout the game, you can get different results, and different things can end up happening. Uh, so far, two of our three friends are dead. And mm -hmm. one of them died in the beginning, as you saw, with that Suspiria-like uh, death. And then uh, Lot died by shotgun. So right now, yeah. Laura's still alive somewhere in this mansion. But we're going to find out what happens to her. I really hope that, that interacting with that book worked. Otherwise, I'm not going to get the ending I want. Hopefully. At worst case scenario, it's all good. We can uh, we can modify the category. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, it should have worked, I think. Yeah. It should have worked. I it made sure to interact twice with it, and Jennifer kind of moved, so I think I got it. And yeah, if we have time, we can do the infamous car ending. A lot of people don't know. Um, you may not know about it. You may know it. And yes, uh, we have two variations of the car ending that we can do. Uh, well, we'll just do the easier one because most people seem to understand that one. And there's one that's actually really glitch heavy and fun to do, but it's a bit tougher. So we'll probably stick with the uh, the easy one, so anyone can do it. Mm-hmm. But for right now, um, the reason why we actually did A ending is because A ending is one of the canon endings. This game has three potential canon endings, uh, A through C. Um, and since we're doing a full series, like, you know, Clock Tower 1, 2, Ghost Head, and 3, all the Clock Tower games, I figure, hey, let's uh, see the story as it progresses. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing in this room, THK? I am freeing a crow. This is... <laughs> This might seem like a little bit of a mundane thing for most casual players, but this is critical in getting the ending that I'm trying to go for. Uh, you'll you'll see why when the ending plays out, but for now I'll leave it as a surprise. But basically we've got everything that we need now to... Wait, I didn't do the doll, did I? No, I didn't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you did the doll, you did the doll. Oh yeah, another bad thing about the staff ending is that she'll mention that this room looks like the one in the mural. At least it's a good indication that you actually did look at the mural. It wasn't the mural I'm worried about, it's the book on the desk. We'll see, we'll see. But yeah, if you have the demon idol, you don't have to do any of the stuff we just did. You don't have to go to the library, you don't need to uh, learn the truth about the staff. You can just go immediately down here, because she can innately use the demon idol for some reason. And it's also canon, like, in the next game you're gonna see, we don't even see the staff, there's no magical staff, just, oh hey, there's the demon idol. <laughs> and now we're in the cave. Yep. And this dog could potentially ruin, the well not ruin this, but... This is one of the yeah, hard yeah. tricks in the game to do, and it's going to be impactful, because normally, uh, at this point, would you like to explain, or should I? Well, I just did it. <laughs> hey! Okay, so you can see you just ran past him by using dialogue uh, right there. Um, that's going to be helpful, because normally you need perfume in a robe to get past this dog, or else you die. It's an, it's an instant death. If you touch that dog, you die. But since we can skip the death trigger by using a text box, you can avoid getting two extra items, and you save a lot of time. The only issue, though, is if you mess up, it's death, and you have to watch all that again, or you have to continue or die. It's really your call. At this point, if you're here, you're pretty much home free, uh, provided we mm -hmm. did everything correctly, which I think you probably should have. I think we did. Uh, I want to make one more note about that dog skip, is that if you go too early on the action glitch for that, uh, you can actually end up soft walking a game. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's a pretty risky skip. Either one, too early you softlock, too late you die. It's exact timing. And that's one of the situations where if you fail, you want to be late. <laughs> because then you can just go in and continue. Right. But I want to give a good uh, good job on that skip. It's one of the harder ones. 
And right now, mm -hmm. we're getting chased by a giant baby. Uh, my favorite part yeah. of this story is that this is uh, the Scissor Man's twin brother. Uh, we had Bobby Barros, this is uh, his twin brother, Dan Barros. Um, if you're wondering, yes, the, he is the twin brother, identical twin brother. Not fraternal, but identical. That giant Siamese, baby is... Um, Siamese Scissor twins, man. I think, actually, according to lore. Oh, which one? I can't... Uh, Siamese, I think. I can't remember. Were they? I believe so. But, um, I, can't, I can't entirely remember. My favorite part, and this will be a weird sentence, and I'm only going to say it here. Um, that giant baby is uh, pretty much covered in, like, orphan meat. It's like an orphan meat <laughs> mech, and it's always really fun yeah. to use that phrase. Imagine, like, Evangelion, but instead of, like, you know, mechs, it's orphan meat. Mm -hmm. And that's Clock Tower. Um, we're doing pretty good. Let's see if we get that ending. Uh, time is coming up Let's in a little see. bit here. Yeah, it will... Time will be when I press the three in the elevator. Uh, we'll see if we got the proper ending as well. We'll let it play out. And then uh, we'll be able to do uh, the quick any percent afterward. But let's just see that ending, see what we got. Yeah, we will see. We, we will see right here, right now. So, cross your fingers. Also, they're just, they're just built different. That's it. They're built different. <laughs> I got it. Cool. Awesome. Time. Hey, good job. All right, let's see that ending. That was a lot better for a staff game than I was expecting. <laughs> also, I see a lot of people in chat are confused. Yeah, yes, orphan meat. Uh, the plot of this yeah. game is that Mary is killing orphans and using them for cannibalistic properties. She's feeding her children orphan meat. She works in an orphanage and has been adopting orphans for years doing this. You can find them in yeah. the meat locker. This is canon. I don't know why the I don't know why Dan can control it like a mech, but. Something something Evangelion. <laughs> yeah. Is it is a giant demon baby, but there's a boy in that mech. Um, by the way, what that book I read uh, um, said is that time will cause adherence. This is where that kind of comes into play. So when these two were born, they kind of stopped the clock tower. For some reason, the clock tower has these has this weird magical property to it where it will like start advancing them and like causing them to die inside i think that's the i think that's how the game explains pretty it. pretty much i think the way uh yeah the way it does it is like they're cursed with, under a blood moon and that stop time in the clock tower mansion so like imagine bobby was born of like eight tumors and then by starting the clock tower bobby was suddenly hit with eight tumors like they were paused and then activating the clock tower hit him with like eight heart attacks at once that's why he died also look there's laura there's our friend man we're actually gonna get out of here alive aren't we Oh. I always like to do the yeet. Yeet! <laughs> <laughs> um... Was there something where we forgot? Did I release something? Maybe. Only one way to find out. Hmm. You know what, what my favorite animal is, by the way? What? Crows. They look pretty good. Yeah. save lives and send crazy ladies to their deaths. Well, you can like train crows, it's cool. Yeah, they're actually really smart birds. But yeah, that is Clock Tower. We do have time for... Yeah, we'll have time for, for a quick uh, any percent car ending. Um, yeah. So really quick, would you like to explain what it is? <laughs> yeah, so... You guys all know... I'm going to re go ahead and reset my game here. Yeah. Do you guys um know the whole classic horror movie trope? Why don't they just get in the car and leave? Why do they, why do they stick around and let the killer go after them? Well, this game actually lets you explore that option. <laughs> so... All I'm going to do is just run over to the left, run over to the left. I don't have to get the West Wing key in this ending. It's a very, this is a very straightforward ending. There's only going to be four glitches in this run. Yeah, roughly about. You can do some of the glitches. Like there's a little thing you do there to save half a second, but um, really you don't Not need it for it. the record. <laughs> Not worth it at all. Now we're gonna be doing the Bobby skip here again, the action skip. Uh, it's gonna allow us to pass Bobby here. Uh, let's see what he does. He actually cooperates this time. 
Also, yeah, the, uh, the giant orphany baby. This is his twin brother right here. Mm -hmm. Identical twin brother. There's a really big resemblance. I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. He's eight feet tall and covered in <laughs> covered in meat. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and play it safe just to show this ending off. Sounds good. By the way, I just want to mention as a weird side note that I'm pretty sure of all the GDU hotfixes and all the GDU events, this is going to be the episode or the night that the words Orphan Meat get featured the most out of any episode. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not a phrase that normally goes together, but, uh, yeah. There's nothing I have to really do here besides wait for him to leave, by the way. So for anyone who missed Bob this category, oh, go ahead. Uh, Bob Bobby just doesn't know how to climb ladders. That's all I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Um, Jeez, get out of here, man. Oh, yeah, I like the time estimate we have, by the way. It's a fun time estimate. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it, but it just says room. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not looking at the stream right now. All good, all good. But yeah, the equivalent of this category is go left, wait for Bobby to leave, yeah. get in the car, and leave. Mm -hmm. So in case you don't actually know where the car key is, it's in this crate over here that I have the cursor highlighting over. And the very coincidental thing about this is that this is an inventory item. So I can do uh, text skips with this. So all I'm really doing is just kind of skipping Jennifer's internal monologue about, oh, maybe I should stick around and try and find my friends. I don't really want to go, but on the third attempt, she actually does leave. And you don't actually have to action skip for that. And that's, that is literally H ending. There that we go. It. That's the entire thing. You just you leave. You, you, you just don't care about that garage door. You just get the heck out of there. And it should be mentioned, uh, if you let the whole credits play, we do get to see a little ending scene. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how long that took. We might need to go a little bit more just to keep the show going, but this has been Clock Tower. <laughs> uh, THK, yeah. uh, while, we're, uh, while we're waiting for this, we can actually do these. Uh, do you have any uh, do you have any shout-outs in as well? Where can people find you on Twitch if they enjoyed the runs? Uh, yeah, so you can you can find me on twitch.tv slash THK573. Um... I get shout shout outs to Ignisus, Petroform, I saw him in there. Uh, Sakura Freak. He he is the one that found most of the glitches and laid out the groundwork for this game to for it to be where it is now. Oh yeah, I remember um, uh, studying his runs like many years ago at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh Ignisus here has even made a few contributions and I like me, myself, Ignisus, Petroform, Soccer Freak, those are like the big four I can think of right off the top of my head. The, um, we, we're all the ones that like push this game to try and get it where it is now. And I guess for like context, when we started, when we first started doing like S ending, which is like the big, if, if it's not H ending that you run, it's S ending. Those are like the two most popular categories for this game. S ending back when I first started running, was like 22 minutes. Then Sakura Freak found, um, Sakura Freak, uh, found all the glitches, and he brought it down to like 16 minutes. Then, I, then I Dices found a few things, and he brought it down to, what was it, like 15 to 14 minutes? Um, something like that. Yeah, it got to about, uh, like slightly under, uh, like I think like a four, like high 14. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, we found other stuff that apparently... <laughs> That's a funny thing. So, in, in the S ending, we thought we had to watch a certain cutscene to get the S ending to trigger. We didn't. We just watched a minute-long cutscene for no reason, and it, it ended up that I just kind of... <laughs> I kind of stumbled across a, a task run. It didn't do that, and we were like, oh, wow, we're all idiots. And that bumped it down like another minute, and I think I got it down at 13 minutes, and then we found we found out about text skipping, and I believe you have it down to like a 12, 
10 or something? 12, 11? Yeah, like roughly around like 12, 11 or 12, 13, I think. I thought it will check, but uh, I'm trying to get sub 12, 10 in the uh, main category. Also, here's the ending. So we did, we're able to get to the ending here. Yeah. Oh, that's why they don't leave. Gotcha. Hey, that's the thing I posted on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, that's that clock uh, tower. That's a clock tower. Thank you, THK. Mm -hmm. uh, anything yeah. else you want to say before we uh, hop on off? Uh, yeah. Um, again, shout shout out to the clock tower speedrunning Discord. Uh, I have not been active there as much as I have I have been in the past, but I pop in now and then, and like everyone is still it's still like a wholesome community. Um, if you ever want to learn speedrunning this game, just hit myself or Ecdysis up, uh, or even Petroform, I saw him in the chat. Any of us would be more than happy to get you started with this game. Um, and I am going to also preface that I, this is the first time in like a couple years that I've actually speedrun this game. I literally, like Ecdysis was literally just like, hey, do you want to do a clock tower speedrun for hotfix and i said yeah sure give me like a week to de-rust and... as well i mean you've been doing this game since like sda days so it's definitely mm -hmm. definitely well deserved yep and i think that's about it yeah all right well with that uh we're going to be uh cutting on over to a quick break while we gear up for the next game in the series uh but don't you go and i'll be right back with more clock tower stuff uh as well um any uh if you do want to support GDQ between events, uh, subbing is always appreciated. As well, uh, if you do have Prime Gaming or Twitch Prime, you can use that to uh, help GDQ during the interim, and is always much appreciated. I want to say thank you very much, and we'll be right back. Thank you once again. All right, and we are back. So that was Clock Tower. Clock Tower was a game that came out only in Japan on the Super Famicom. And uh, the reason why it's actually so special as well is it's actually one of the world's first, uh, earliest, not first, one of the world's earliest horror games. Uh, it came out in 1995 and actually predated games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. So as a franchise, there's a lot going around on it. Uh, this next game, though, is going to be uh, the sequel. And it's going to be kind of weird because a lot of people know about this game. Uh, the SNES one, the Super Famicom game, uh, Clock Tower SNES, uh, that game was only exclusive to Japan. This game came out in North America and was also known as Clock Tower, also known as Clock Tower 2. So it's gonna be a bit weird, we're using the North American versions of these things, but, uh, I'll actually be your runner for this game, and it's gonna be a bit... campier and sillier, and there's gonna be some oddities about it. Uh, I'm just gonna say enjoy the ride for what it is, it's gonna be a very weird game. But uh, this is going to be Clock Tower PS1, and we'll talk more about this in, uh, in a moment here. But first, we're going to take it away. So let's head on over to the game. Uh, as well, um, since I'm going to be a runner, I do have something to show you before we begin. Uh, I did forget about this, but uh, I'm going to be joined by our carcinogen SDA. Uh, he actually uh, ran this game before I did. I think he was actually one of the original mods of this game. Um, but uh, also, Richard, a uh, question for you as well. Uh, this is gonna be really weird because I got this recently, but Clock Tower is a game, uh, Clock Tower PS1 is a game where you can actually play it on a PlayStation 1 mouse. So normally you'd be using a controller like this. However, you can actually play the game straight up on like uh, a mouse and this, this plugs into PlayStations and it's really awkward and weird. Uh, it's so weird that it, it has like the ball roller and stuff and it's just such a weird thing that it's going to be interesting to use. As well, there's going to be a question coming up. Just don't worry, that's perfectly natural. Let me just do one more thing. And now we're getting into the game. Uh, let me just make sure we get to the main menu here. Also, I'll be using the alternate costumes. So, Carsey, how are you doing today? Uh, not too bad, Eck. How about yourself? Doing good. Uh, quick question before we begin. Have you ever seen the Japanese version of this game? I don't believe I have. Uh, I have seen like I have seen like some some like Easter egg or some alternate modes or something. But we're gonna be playing around with that. But I okay. just want to mention right. um, uh, for those of you who are new to uh, just Clock Tower games in general, uh, Clock Tower PlayStation One, also known as Clock Tower, actually does have a hidden mode on the Japanese version, and it's exclusive to the Japanese version. Uh, this mode is called the Buyo Buyo mode. Uh, just 
understand that that sentence is a thing and we'll be learning what that is in a moment. Anyway, uh, if we're ready to go down on time, I'll count it down and we can uh, begin to go. So three, two, one, let's go. Booyah, booyah. Also, the games we're doing tonight are uh, Clock Tower uh, SNES, which we already did, Clock Tower PS1, Clock Tower 2, The Struggle, and, and Clock Tower 3. So, uh, for this game, this takes place one year after the last game. Uh, Jennifer is now in therapy because, you know, she experienced murder. That's usually bad. So, we're kind of here and we're playing as this therapist known as Professor Barton. Uh, it's kind of more just the tutorial section and teach you, hey, here's how you point and click. Uh, as well, if anything sounds weird, that's because I'm running it on a PS2 with fast disk speed. Uh, this makes all the voices faster, but make all the loads faster too. So it's going to be uh, a lot faster in general. And uh, Carsey, question actually. So what made you want to run this game originally? Uh, I... I... I, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, just do, I just do things sometimes. I know that feeling very well. Actually, no. It was a, someone, someone, someone actually bought me the game, and I just decided, well, okay, if you're gonna buy me the game, then I'm just going to, I'm just gonna do a speed run of it, and it just, you know, snowball effect. So I set a record for it. All right. And I wanted to ask that just because I do know that originally uh, your route, uh, the category of Jennifer 100, ended up being kind of the main thing for this game, and uh, the speedrun community has grown a bit since. Uh, there's been a lot of development lately uh, from a Japanese runner by the name of Batsuke. He's actually become kind of the clock tower PlayStation 1, like, god of sorts. He's got a lot of the world records in these games, and uh, he's just been absolutely destroying the clock tower scene. Uh, now, if you're wondering, uh, there he is, Batsuke, that guy, uh, there he is. Batsuke-san, Hiroshi. Yeah! Um, he is an absolute legend in the Clock Tower community. He got world record in Ghost Head. He has world record like in almost every category of this game. And he actually taught me what Buyo Buyo means. Uh, Buyo Buyo is kind of, I think, the Japanese onomatopoeia for like boing boing or bouncing. So you can see all the characters in this game are now bouncing. They're they're bouncing now. Uh, this is just kind of a fun Japanese mode where if you get every single ending in the game, all the characters get really, really bouncy, and it's kind of fun to match them. Uh, so for the tutorial here, what's going to be happening is I'm going to be talking to both of the characters twice, and I'm talking to all the objects in the room. Uh, as well, uh, while we're doing this, uh, this is kind of just the tutorial of the game. Like, hey, you're going to have to talk to you with the information, you're going to have to, you know, investigate objects to learn more about the story. So this is kind of just... A more fun way of playing the game because it's very very bouncy so it's fun stuff i just i love the bouncing i'm beginning to feel a little seasick i've heard a few people mention that but it's gonna get really weird in some areas which is why it's kind of fun and luckily it doesn't like i feel like if you did this for like hours on end it can uh, definitely i think get on someone but i think for the one hour it is it'll be it'll be pretty chill <laughs> <laughs> even better um so, as you can see, the characters are always bouncing, right? They're going to be bouncing through some other areas as well. So, anything that happens, they will be bouncing. Every single... Oh, no, not there. Uh, no, go, 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 go back. Hold on. There we go. Sometimes the game's a bit awkward. I'm still kind of adjusting the PS1 mouse here. <laughs> uh, it doesn't make it faster, but this game has a lot of dialogue mashing, and it's funny to watch them bounce, so it's very silly. Also, just after, you know, the first year of the Clock Tower series, uh, everyone just started bouncing. Anyway, to decide our route, we actually have to talk to this guy. If you talk to him once, you'll go on the Helen route, which is another speedrun, but we're doing the Jennifer 100 route. So we actually need to talk to him twice, and I'll last play as Jennifer. This game actually has a lot of playable characters. So, here's Jennifer. And yes, dot matrix printers are horrible. They're very, very, very horrible. I know all about printers in many ways, and I just want to complain about that. Also, for the lore, like I mentioned, this is one year after the Clock Tower murders, and we're kind of in, like, a criminal psychologist area. So they're kind of researching the murders, and like, oh, let's get to the bottom of the story here. Uh, realistically, it's just people sensationalizing murder in the news and people bouncing to conclusions, as one does. He has a real fun way of waiting in the elevator, by the way. Also, they're bouncing because it's something called Buyo Buyo. I actually wanted to make a bounce command, but I don't think we had time to make it, so I'm going to answer this question a lot today. Another weird thing is that objects won't move if they're holding them, but the people will move. So you might see uh, Tim here with the camera, 
And it just, the camera always stays stationary, but he will be bouncing. Tim always taking and pictures it's really like, oh weird. yeah, look at that hot action. And uh, Pagan, it is Batake. I think I actually saw him in chat. Uh, B-A-T-A-K-E. Uh, Batake is an absolute legend in the Clock Tower community right now. I think he had all the world records for every PS1 game. Uh, so he is really good. He is really good. And he actually uh, debuted this at uh, RTA in Japan. And yeah, this is uh, the, obviously the healthy one. Everyone's doing squats. Yeah, this whole dialogue right here is just kind of about how, oh, the murder's being sensationalized with these two, and they don't want any part of that. Also, I don't know why they bounce in different rhythms. Uh, most of the speedrun is going to be endgame-based, so a lot of the uh, later levels are going to have a lot of the movement tech, a lot of the stuff that we're doing. Uh, early on, the main thing to notice, uh, kind of pointed out when we get back to the first hallway, but running this game is really awkward, and I don't know why... Um, but running this game, normally you have to do a very specific double click. If you mash click, he'll walk. If you double click, they'll run. And this actually makes a big difference, believe it or not. As well, another weird tech in this game, because it's a point and click, is something called precursoring. So, very often, whenever I'm kind of going to the next area, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to put my cursor above whatever's next. So I'm constantly just clicking to the next object. That makes it much, much faster, and it's much more efficient. Also, the mouse is nice, because I can have it nice and stable in my movement. Although, I, I, I'm I still not used to the ball mouse. I haven't used one since I was in, like, a kid. Oh, since I was a kid. I was young. I was, I was gonna say, like, in school, but I don't remember the last time I used a ball mouse. How responsive is it otherwise? It's pretty good, actually. Uh, the only thing I noticed, though, is, like, um, you can't, like, zoom like a regular mouse, but it's pretty good on the actual movement parts. Oh, the other issue could just be I also have shaky hands, because I play a lot of games. So it could also be partly due to that reason. But honestly, it's pretty good for uh, for PS1 mouse. And I'm actually wondering what other games it works on. I know it works on Clock Tower PS1 and uh, Ghost Head, or Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within, but I'm not sure what other games. All right, there we go. So you can kind of see him awkwardly running. So one more thing to mention right now is we're going to be sending the Demon Idol to a certain spot. Uh, this will actually save time later. Um, but we're going to talk to this lad Harris here who's bouncing around, and I want him to show the demon idol to an old man. Uh, this old man's going to become very important later. Uh, there's two scenarios in Chapter 2 that we can do. We can either go to the old man's house or we can go to the library. Now, the library is for nerds, and it takes too much time. And this way, by going to see an old man... Can you talk to the... There we go. By going to see the old man, we're going to be able to save a lot of time because it's much, much more efficient. Also, this is a special uh, Japanese setting called Buyo Buyo. It's native to the game. This is unmodded. This is on a PS2. This is all native to the game. I really wish we had a bounce command, but it's very, very, very bouncy. Anyway, we stick to the yes side, because that's going to allow us to give the demon idol to the old man, which will come in handy later. Uh, now, the reason why I like doing the Jennifer route is just because I kind of like her story a little bit more. I like the aesthetic of hers. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff in there, which we'll be able to see throughout the levels. Uh, but you can either do the Helen route or the Jennifer route, and both change quite a lot. And it's bouncing. We're bouncing on to the speed run hotfix. We're bouncing on in. The last run was about orphan meat. This run's about bouncing. A real uh, change in the story, as you can see. Also, oddly enough, this game came out the same year that Resident Evil did. It did? Yeah, 1996. Oh. I think it Which... came out uh, for this game a couple of months after. But the reason I bring that up is because later we're going to see a friend from the Resident Evil series uh, making an appearance in one of the levels. Uh, for right now, though, this uh, lady was actually working at the orphanage where Jennifer came from. So it kind of ties back to the first game. This little boy is just growing in size. I don't think he's even bouncing. He's like gaining height. Like everyone else is bouncing, but she's, or he's gaining height here. And it's, it always trips me out because like the shorts don't grow any higher, but the jacket does. Anyway, that was uh, the prologue here. And now we have the actual uh, game. We're actually getting into the zone. And here's Jennifer in her, in a room. Uh, Clock Tower is going to have two modes of gaming. Uh, the first one is going to be like an overtown uh, map where you get to look around and kind of just interact with various locations. 
Uh, so first things first, we're going to be going to the hotel because we're going to talk to Kay and Edward, uh, the woman and child we just saw. Uh, you always have to talk to a certain amount of people in the games. And also, thank you for the uh, explanation for that one, Unnatural. I do say thank you for that one. And we did play the SNES Clock Tower. We did play that one, yes. I'll be doing the other two Clock Tower games after this one as well. But the main gist of the map sections is quickly go to the sections you need to, get over the dialogue, just kind of mash the button, and then we can get to the actual level that we want to go to. And yes, he is extending. He is he's bouncing in excitement for this game. Uh, after this, I'll be pretty quick. We'll be going to the library to talk to Helen. And then we will be going back to our room. And after those three, we get to begin level one, which is going to be kind of comical. Not just because of the bouncing, but for a few other reasons. But yes, uh, this is <laughs> a lot of how this game goes. I like Buyo Buyo and the bouncing because it kind of makes me laugh during the interim during these little uh, dialogue mashing portions. Uh, as well, uh, having the game be in Japanese makes it a lot faster because this game works in scrolling text. This game isn't really just mash it and it'll go away. Uh, with this game, this is all just kind of... Uh, it will scroll on by, and you can't really mash that. So by having it in Japanese, we save a lot of time. Which is also why we want to be on the PS2 version of this game. Uh, you can play it on PS3, it's a little bit slower, so you save a lot of time just by Japanese PS2. Also, yes, this is the Clock Tower PS1 that was in North America. Uh, it's going to be kind of weird based because of the, uh, the bouncing in the Japanese language, but it is indeed the same game. Also, this game does have some mild RNG, but it'll mostly be end-gamed. Uh, it's pretty stable in the early game, but when you get to the third level, a lot of RNG can happen. If it does happen, it is quite unfortunate. Buyo is legal for this category because all it does is it loses you two seconds. You lose time by activating Buyo. It doesn't help you at all. It loses you time. It does nothing for the frange. And no, you cannot play this on the Switch. This game came out on the PlayStation 1 back in 1996. I don't think it's uh, currently compatible on the Switch. Anyway, here's the reporter from earlier who went into Jennifer's room for some reason. He's, he's a weird dude. We're just going to leave it at that. But uh, we need to talk with him, and then we'll be able to get to our first level, the school. Uh, a lot of people know the university level playing this game. I am kind of sad that I don't get to show off one of my favorite parts, which is this game actually has a fax machine where you can get faxed, I'm going to kill you. And it is kind of hilarious. Also, CRT monitors in this game. that just say the word kill on them. But just kind of enjoy this. Um, this game takes place in Norway, and you can tell by the misspelled Scandinavia sign here. It says Scandinavia instead of Scandinavia. Uh, I'm not sure why it takes place in Norway. They just um, they decided they wanted their Japanese Italian horror game to be also Norwegian. So um, Scandinavia living. Japanese Italian horror game. Yeah, so the Claw Terror series is based on the uh, Italian horror films of Dario Argento, which was the very Italian style horror of Suspiria, Phenomena, and then the director Fumi Kono wanted to kind of capture that magic in his game. So it's Japanese made, Italian inspired, but also it takes place in Norway. That I did not know. Yeah, it's a really weird way on the, how the game developed. Also, hey, look, a friendly security guard. I hope he's gonna be okay. Also, you hear all the dialogue really fast because of fast disk speed, so it kind of just uh, will lead to some pretty funny results. Also, he's dead, but not actually because he's lying. He's still bouncing. If you're wondering, how do things bounce in this game? If they're living, they're bouncing. All right, now the scissor man is chasing us. We're in action. We're going to do the fastest thing. We're going to go in this room. Now, we're going to be running to this box. Jennifer is a master hider, practically on par with Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Look at her bouncing inside of the box. He can't find us, because we're too good. <laughs> anyway, we hide in this room because there's going to be an oil can, and the oil can is going to be necessary for the finale. So we need this oil can in this room. As well, it is extremely convenient that this box will always work, and this is man will be gone. This is man can randomly spawn, but uh, we do not want to um, deal with him much. If we do deal with him, we have to get rid of him. And that's why I love this game. The bouncing is quite hilarious. Okay, so the next step is I need to get the key for the exit. 
Uh, it is right by the elevator, right here. And you're about to see the uh, the funniest thing, and this will kind of talk about the whole living dead thing. Um, so this guy is not actually alive, but he's also alive. I should say his body is alive, but his head is dead. And that is why his head is not bouncing, but his body is bouncing. <laughs> it's supposed to be a jump scare if you touch him, his head falls off, so the body is bouncing, but the head just oh. stays in place. Man, I wondered how they were going to handle that. <laughs> yeah, and it gets really weird because anytime you see, like, any weapons used by people or, like, if someone's holding a gun, the gun will stay in place while they're bouncing, and it's kind of hilarious. Anyway, uh, now that we got the key, we can just leave. Uh, we literally go to the top. Uh, I'm going to be getting out the uh, the key here. Then for run. And, uh, yeah, we're done with the first level. So, uh, Carsey, have you ever seen someone climb a ladder while bouncing? No. No, 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 I have not. I'm, I'm just going to let you all appreciate this. And also, Jennifer is going to be the most exhausted person of all time because of fastest speed. He's really climbing that ladder. That's... That is that is something, all right. It's really weird, because she just keeps going up and down, and also because of fast disc speed. Normally, she, like, takes breaths at every climb, but because of, you know, how that goes, she does, like, all her breaths in one moment, like, one motion, and it's really weird. Also, this is not a hack. This is a native Japanese setting, and it's only available in the, uh, the original Japanese version of the game. If you have the North American version, this is not available. You can only get this on the Japanese version. So it's a wee bit different. And this is why we do the Japanese version as well. It's funny. Uh, so right now, Jennifer survived her murder and she went to the police. And now they're wondering what in the world is going on. We have an assistant inspector Gots here. We have Helen, who's your adopted mom. And uh, now we're going to get to the bottom of this. Uh, this is going to be the chapter where things are really going to kind of come into play. I mentioned earlier that we sent a demon idol to an old man. Uh, that old man is now going to be uh, playing a very important factor. Uh, the old man in this game um, is the faster route because his scenario requires you to do like three things. Uh, going to the library requires much, much more and you get to play as Helen, which it's not bad, but ideally you just kind of want to get in and out. Uh, this way, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk to Helen first. Uh, we'll kind of explain the situation or talk about it. But we're actually going to be going over to Nolan, because I'll become the next playable character. And uh, we'll kind of see that as we uh, click on through here. But yeah, it's a very special game, as you can see. And this is also why I wanted to make a bounce command, but we didn't have a bounce command. So I'm ha I, I do thank people in chat for posting the this is Buyo Buyo mode. <laughs> Because it's always the one question I end up answering quite a lot whenever I play this. It is, why are they bouncing? And the answer is because it's funny, and this is a native setting. So hopefully that does explain it. It's an unlockable setting. And I think it's mainly because old, like a lot of the older Japanese devs really like the silly settings like this. They like the joke settings. Um, so it's just kind of a fun thing to uh, get if you get every single ending in the game. Which required a lot of determination. You had to get, uh, there's five endings per character. Uh, you had to get um, five on Helen here and then five on Jennifer, which is ten endings. Also, yes, this is on a mouse. The PS1 mouse, as you can see. It has a ball and everything. I'm actually playing like this. Well, actually, I'm constantly bouncing in my own chair, too. Oh, God. The only problem, though, is every now and again, like, the game sticks on location so you don't get off of them. Are you telling me you all aren't just bouncing right now in your chair? Anyway, here's my favorite strategy in the game. You get to click on Nolan's butt for like a minute. Uh, just because the yes prompt is over here, as well as Nolan's dialogue. So it's going to be faster to click right here. But it is constantly moving because he's bouncing. He's oh, constantly wow. bouncing. That yep. is, that is, that is, that's, that's, that's really annoying. Yeah, but it's not that, I mean, the, the location doesn't move. Like, the actual talking location is fine. It just kind of the, uh, his own model moves. If, like, if I had to move up and down each time, that would be really annoying. But luckily, it's, like, right oh, about okay, here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so the, that, so that, that's, that's not too bad. So the, actual, so the actual trigger remains the same. Right, right. Uh, it should also be mentioned as well that a lot of the time save for this game was actually found in the finale, uh, mainly due to just overall better routing and much more efficient movements. 
Um, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff there. And I bet you're wondering, hey, wait a minute. We're not really, we've kind of only been bouncing for the whole time. Why is this 100%? Like, what's the deal, huh? But 100% requires us, in the end of the game, to save every single living person in the game. Uh, in total, there are seven people who we can end up saving, and we're going to be saving them. Um, it's kind of a nice ending, and it's also one of those weird scenarios that for the longest time, 100% was actually faster than doing any percent. Now I think any percent is faster once again, so technically that should be the any percent. But for a while, doing 100 was actually faster, because a lot of things that you needed ended up working well with that. All right, so here's the old man, and uh, this is how I want to sit in any couch. I'm just sinking on in. Just falling into the couch. Also, Nolan changed his jacket to be brown instead of blue, because there's alternate costumes in this game, and they're pretty funny. So, fun fact. Um, Carsey, you see this old guy right here? The guy with the brown jacket, blue shirt? Oh, I can't wait to see what happens when he gets crashed by the chandelier. But, uh, that, that is when we want the fun things, and I'll talk more about that. Um, do you know he's voiced by, uh, the same guy who did Barry Burden? I, actually, I did not know that. Yeah, this old dude right here is Barry Burden. I guess he's friends with Hifumi Kono, who is the director of the Clock Tower, original two Clock Tower games, and he would actually later go on to reprise another role in Night Cry, where he played the main villain. Oh. Huh. Yeah. I'm not sure how Barry Burden got into Clock Tower, especially even that they came out the same year, but... He plays an old man, so you can actually say, wow, what a mansion. Or what a house, I say. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. What is, who is, who is his voice actor? What's his name? I can't remember the exact name, but I do know it's the, I think it actually does, it might have the word Barry in it too, actually, I think. I have. But I know I've I, looked it up I before. Have heard, I have heard this, but I don't know. Yeah, I do know they are the same. And once you notice it, it gets kind of weird. Although he's going to be speaking really fast once he gets up. It might be a bit hard to tell, but he'll be speaking really, really fast. And it's always my favorite fact about this game. Also, funny enough, whatever, if you play as Helen or Jennifer, uh, this old man will always, uh, let's just say he's not going to have a good time. So, we kind of mentioned something about a chandelier. So, old man Rick here is going to show us his favorite chandelier that he got from the Barrows family. And I just want to... Just look how much he looks up at the chandelier. I'm sure nothing bad is going to happen to the chandelier that he looks up at the whole time. Yes, what wonderful times those were. Except for... Sure nothing bad will happen to him. See, look, he's he's doing fine. He's alive. He's still bouncing. <laughs> he's still going. All right. So now we have to escape the scissor man because the scissor man dropped the chandelier. See, now he's dead. He was living for a little bit, but now he's dead. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna be going to the second floor. Second floor is the fastest. We're gonna quickly make our way up there. We're gonna be running. Here we go. And on the second floor, there are two rooms. There is like a sitting room with a TV, and then there is also a uh, room right here, which is like a bedroom. We're going to the bedroom because the bedroom's gonna be much, much faster. Um, once we're in the bedroom, we're going to hide in here. There's two options. You can either kill him with a blanket, yes, a blanket, or you can hide in here. Now, Nolan is also a master hider, so he has to keep a constant watch with his head out. I sure hope the scissor man doesn't find us. See, nothing <laughs> suspicious here. We're fine. Yeah, the, uh, the, the shiffer robe has, uh, has a, has a built-in <laughs> hole for you to peek your head out of. Exactly, master he's, espionage. He's, yeah, he's too, he's too short to see it. So, uh, the reason why I went to the, uh, the shiffer rope here is because inside of it is the demon idol from the last game that we didn't pick up. We got the staff instead, but now we have the demon idol, and that's going to be, uh, necessary to beat the level with the good ending. If you don't get this, you get the bad ending. That's actually really the only thing that decides that. You need this demon idol. Uh, now that we have it, we're going to be doing two more things, and we're done with the level. Uh, as well, I could show up a fun Easter egg. I'm gonna try it once. If you don't get it, that's okay. I'll try it once. Uh, 
get in shop. Damn. Well, let's go two more. I usually do three. I lied. I'll do two more. It doesn't lose that much time. Very Gerda, by the way. Very. Is... All right, so I did have a berry, and I was right. Yeah, it was. It was a very, very Gerda. I think that's. A, I think that's a Norwegian name. All right. Uh, one more. Hey, there it is. Okay. <laughs> so this is a weird like... Easter egg where. Uh... That's my favorite Susan Rand encounter, actually. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's bouncing. He is vibing with these cartoons right now. He's absolutely going. Just enjoying vibing, children's vibing cartoons. Vibing with that cartoon violence. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, he just starts chasing you because you're interrupting his cartoons. Everybody and now we're being chased Superman again. And his cartoons, he will chop you to ribbons. All right, so the way we get rid of this is we just use an umbrella. You have to understand, it's like rock, paper, scissors. The rock is actually an umbrella. Now, the most awkward thing is to do the panic event, I have to mash right trigger on the mouse. I thought it would just be left trigger like everything else. Nope, it is right. And then... Smack. <laughs> See, he's still bouncing. Also, I should mention that the scissor man can like tank gunshots, but an umbrella and a blanket? No, no, you're 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 all good. Just get an umbrella and a blanket, you'll be safe. Oh, well, uh, Carsey, what was the uh, Norwegian name again for uh, Barry? It was a uh, Barry Barry Gerda. There we go. So right now we're actually gonna need some soap because uh, we're gonna die otherwise to a puzzle if we don't have it. It's very important. You have to be clean. Being hygienic is very important here. Always use soap, chat. Always use soap. That is the PSA of today. Use soap. I guess that's more detergent, but the principle is the same. Keeps you healthy. Keeps you clean. So the RNG that can happen as you play the game is the scissor man can randomly show up from time to time because this game wanted to amp up the fear. Um, so ideally, if you hear music, you have to hide. That's the main thing. You have to get rid of them. And now, time for the weirdest... Um, thing to happen with this game. Uh, let's assume you want to get a midnight snack, but then uh, you will have a random scary mask that decides you don't get your 4 a.m. snack. Instead, you have to deal with the, um, the, the snack demon. Just imagine any time you wanted to go downstairs for food, and then you had to fight off a snack demon. It's uh, part of the Weight Watchers premium plan. Exactly. It's not worth the effort at that point. You have to dodge the chair and the uh, the portrait and use a can to kill the, the mask. Uh, that ends up letting us know where the actual clock tower castle is. So it's not the clock tower castle in the last game. It's an entirely separate clock tower mansion. I don't know why. There's like two clock tower mansions. Also, here's a dog. He's bouncing. We're going to give him some soap. It's, it's delicious. It's not... Harmful whatsoever. It's delicious, delicious soap. See, it's he's okay. Time for your bath, Beethoven. Exactly. It's just bath time. That's it. That's all it is. That's all it is. All right. So now we get probably one of the dumbest parts of this game. Um. So for this game, they wanted to kind of make it a big who done it on who is the Scissor Man. Who who could it be? It could be anyone. It could be you. It could be me. It could even be Carsey. Be anyway. yeah, it could never be me. It can never be you? So, in order to fit that, the way it makes it done is you have to go to almost every location in the game, and then you're going to have to then uh, talk to them, and then they're going to tell you, hey, you're going to London? I've always wanted to go to London. Sign me up. And then everyone's, like, buying flights to London that are last minute, and since this was the 90s, they didn't have to pay an arm and a leg for flights. Like, they literally get an overnight to London from Norway, and all of them just decide, yeah, let's let's do that. That sounds like the right idea. And pretty much, the original game was a mansion, this one will be like a castle. I guess they're both technically mansions, there's not really much of a difference, I suppose. Also, we need the soap on the dog, because he'll kill you otherwise. You actually learn that because, um... If you do Helen's route, the do the old man will die to his own dog, and it it's kind of funny to watch the dog bounce all over him. 
You know, to this day, I still have not finished uh, Helen's scenario yet. It's pretty good, actually. Like, I think it's, as a speedrun, it's a little bit better than Jennifer's, but I just, like, Jennifer's is the main category most people tend to do. Uh, Helen's has been growing a lot more lately. Uh, I think the main reason people don't like Helen's as much is just because you have to play a, uh, more of the early game. But you do get to see the, like, it's almost always you're going to see it. You know, the in Helen's, there's a point where the Scissor Man will spawn in a room with a bunch of computers, and then every time he, like, goes, like, snip, snip, uh, the words kill will show up on CRT monitors. That is actually probably my second favorite Scissor Man encounter. What's the first one? Scissor Man watching cartoons. It's pretty good. I, I just enjoy the facts too much. I think the like the getting a fact saying gonna kill ya is really just <laughs> pinnacle is, 90s. Yeah. <laughs> just the and way I, like the, I mentioned, yeah. oh god. Just the way the Scissor Man just, just slowly inflicts psychological torment on you throughout. I like how like, he learned like, how to university. use a fax machine. Like, of all the things. Also, they're bouncing because this is a Japanese setting where they're able to bounce. Alright, then we go to the police station. And then once we're all done with this uh, section, we don't have to worry about just people bouncing in conversation anymore. Uh, we're going to be able to kind of get through the main point of the game. Like, for the most part, you play a lot of this game through the castle, which will be the finale, Castle 3. And yeah, I think the absurdity of the game definitely makes it better. Just how weird it can get, how odd it really just builds up. I think it's always nice and fun. I think it makes for a perfect silly game. I really don't know many other settings kind of like this. Uh, I know the next game we're doing is going to be incredibly silly, and that's going to be uh, Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within. But that's silly for reasons that aren't due to adding silliness. It's kind of just base story. And then Clock Tower 3 is also pretty silly in its own right. All right, almost done. But yeah, everyone just wanted to go to London for some reason. Norwegian cops. Yay, we gotta go to London. That's the right idea. Uh, just standard people working in college. Yeah, let's buy tickets to London. I don't know how much an overnight to London would cost from Norway. Like, let's assume they're in... I think they're in Oslo, Norway, and they're flying to London, England. Like... I'm not even really sure that, like, a flight from... A flight from London to Oslo would even take, like, quote-unquote, overnight. Well, like, I'm assuming it's also, like, they well, they do that, and then as well, they also take a road trip into, like, the wilderness, which I know that takes to nighttime, or, like, they have to camp out. I think it's more just getting day of travel, or, like, day before travel. Like, not gonna lie. Normally, if I ever buy, like, plane tickets, to, like, I guess not recently, but in the past, I'd always wait, like, I don't know... Six months in advance or something. I'd buy it early. Also, look, see, Oslo to London. Eesh. 244 to fly now. Huh. $244? Well, I mean... These people are in college. How are they, how are they affording a flight? Oh. Well, I All guess, right. you know, it's, it's Norway. I mean, everything's not quite so landlocked over in Europe compared to uh, over here in the western hemisphere i guess it makes sense it's just that's always the the weirdest part of the game to me anyway now we're gonna have that whodunit moment we're gonna find out who is the scissor man now who do you think it is everyone who do you think is the scissor man is it you is it me is it carsey is it someone in the game it i think it's anyone, actually really. barry gerda it's barry Ger the guy who died under a chandelier <laughs> he faked his death with the chandelier money i mean it would it would it would be it would be the plot twist that nobody expected. Also, now we're in a sailor outfit. Also, he's gonna unmask himself. Look what look what happens. We'll see who it is. It's another scissor man. I don't know why he had two no. masks on. <laughs> Alright, so it's actually Harris. Uh this guy we talked in the game the game. Uh he has some weird obsession with Jennifer, so he kills people because he figures the scissor man will get him what he wants. But um, you just heard Harris, like, explode? That might give a mild hint on who the scissor man might be. Is it Harris? He is peering down on us. He admitted to it. Nope, it's two scissor men. But Harris is still bouncing here. You know, if you're gonna, it's actually just the chandelier. It's the chandelier. That's the scissor man. 
Anyway, we're gonna get rid of the scissor man right now because he's chasing us. So, we are going to be using clothes, jackets. It's his biggest weakness. It's like rock, paper, scissors. Jackets beat scissors. That's just how it goes. So the order of things I'm going to be doing here is actually going to be very specific though. Uh, if I go the wrong way or take too long, I might mess up the category and I won't be able to get the 100%. So I make sure I immediately want to go back into the room here. Uh, if I don't go back into this room, I might accidentally kill one of the people. And that would be bad because this is, you know, 100%. First things first as well, we need a key from here because the scissor man actually had a key. We were stealing the key while we were bouncing off the scene. Uh, this is going to be the key that's going to allow me to escape the little dungeon area here. Uh, you can see it's right up here. As well, we saw the demon idol and the oil from earlier. That's both going to come in handy. Now, we're going back to the library, because the library is actually going to have an endgame tool for us. Uh, we're going to be getting a Latin door spell. Now, I don't speak Latin, and neither do most, most people, so... We're just going to be taking this, and we'll be translating it later. So now it kind of comes a bit of the RNG in place. Uh, this is mild RNG. It will lose you maybe anywhere from like maybe just two to three seconds, depending if you get the worst RNG or the better RNG. But we're going to be looking at a sign. It's either going to be moon, sun, or star. It's moon. We got best RNG. I'm not even going to take the plate. Uh, you can take that plate in the background. Um, it's one of those three, and you have to remember it for the end game because it's going to be a puzzle that requires you to remember this. So everyone, I'm going to ask you in like 10 minutes or so, what was the answer? Remember, it's Moon. Anyway, here's Gots. He's just going to be passed out on the floor. He, we saved him. So this game actually, uh, this was found by Batsuke actually. Um, but in order to save people, you just need to see them. You don't need to talk to them. Oh. Yep. I didn't know that for the longest time. I, I thought you had to, like, talk to them, right? I suppose that would actually make sense, because by then, like, the uh, like the event data is already seeded, so... Yeah, so we're just gonna let him pass out on the ground. He just gets to chill. Uh, thanks to Botsuke, we saved a lot of time in this section just because of things like this. Um, and I know that sounds simple, but very often, whenever you speed in a game, you don't think about this. So, just being able to avoid that dialogue saves you a lot of time. He just passed it on the ground, but he's alive, so that's what matters. And now we have one of the seven people saved. And they're bouncing because it's a Japanese uh, joke setting. Watch, it's called Buyo Buyo. So I pause the game, Buyo Buyo on. And that is what it is. It's unlockable after 10 endings are unlocked. Ah, yeah, everyone's telling me it's moon, perfect. Okay, so first things first, we're going to have to do some uh, positive routing here. We're going to this top left room first because it's going to have a special key for us. Uh, more energy that can happen is if I hear the scissor man's music, I have to get rid of him. Uh, if I keep him around, I can end up killing someone on accident, so that's bad. Uh, first things first, oh, we're going to go to the center here. And then we're going to be going to this dresser here. And this summons a mouse. See, a little mouse. The mouse wasn't bouncing, he was actually dead. It's a lie, that mouse wasn't living. He may have been surviving, but he was not truly living. <laughs> Whoa. Right, trippy, dude. Anyway, from here, we're actually getting a key to uh, one of the endgame areas, the library key that's hidden right behind the mouse. So now that it's been revealed, we can go grab it. And we're going to be grabbing a few more things while we're here. We're not going to be going downstairs, and this is going to be another little bit of routing. And I guess this kind of just makes sense as well, but we're going to make kind of a loop instead of backtracking. We're going to start in this door right here, uh, making sure to run to all these doors by precisely clicking. I know that sounds weird, but that is the case. We, if we get captured, we'll throw them out the door. If we get captured, hopefully we don't. I do this one early because we can just go here. And we will see Barton on the ground. Yep, there he is. Barton's alive. We don't have to worry about him anymore. He just tripping on that tree, just vibing. We'll say he's vibing. I think that's the best way to put it. So imagine you're in a garden and just everything around you is going up and down. That's Barton. Right now, we need to go to the kitchen. Uh, this right here is going to lead me to a very important area that's going to give me the key that allows me to pretty much make it to the rest of the level. All the while, make sure to keep an ear out. I do not want to hear that uh, that music, that deadly music. Games like this have always been kind of weird because if Jennifer doesn't know how to do something, you don't know how to do something. So you have to be like, oh, hey, there's a hole in the ground. And then, oh, hey, there's a button behind these. Even though I know they're there, Jennifer doesn't know they're, uh, those are there, so I have to do them. And I won't be able to push it until then. 
Now, in order to do this next room optimally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my cursor right on the left side, roughly, and I want to immediately leave the room upon going in. Doing this activates the wine, and then we have to investigate because noisy wine is something to check out. What's behind the noisy wine? It's... Beth. 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 Oh, it's you. Can you just imagine panicking next to all the wine bottles? I don't want to make myself move another step from here. Like she's also, not doing well right now. I was in her position. I just... I don't know. <laughs> right? Pretty much bottoms probably, up in this area. Probably, like... probably, probably, probably wind up with my finger in one of the wine casks. Yeah, like you have the you have like two right here, and all the bottles, and you're about to die, and she's horrified. So instead, Why instead of giving us wine, Beth is going to give Beth, us maybe an escape route. a key. She's one of the only ones we actually have Beth to talk to. Beth is not having good vibes. So don't worry, Beth is now considered alive. We now have three of the seven survivors. So, we've narrowed it down so far. Who do you think it is? It's definitely not Jennifer, at the very least. We can tell you that much. I don't know if Jennifer actually counts as a survivor. She might. I can tell you it's not Jennifer, at the very least. We can we can rule that one out. Let's see. We got... We got Gots. We got Beth. We got Tim. We got... Uh... The Professor. We got... Nolan. Helen. Nolan. Helen, uh, Kay, and Dan. Kay and Dan. Yeah, so she, so Jennifer would count as a survivor, I think. I think she does. Yeah. All right, so for this next part, I'm going to be um, avoiding a fight. Uh, a lot of people, there's like a red herring for Jennifer's route. You can fight a hand? You don't need to fight a hand. You can just go to the bed and find the book. Helen needs to fight the hand, but Jennifer does not. Also, I just want to say thank you for people in chat who are posting the Buyo Buyo explanation. It is very much appreciated. Okay, so we didn't get the Scissor Man spawning. That's actually really good. If we get it, we'll do the, the funny getting rid of them, but I'm surprised. Normally, like, last time I played this, he actually spawned early. I guess that's a good thing, huh? So, this game is also kind of stupid and mean. Um, if you didn't grab the oil in the very first level of this game, what ends up happening is this door is permanently locked because it's rusty. It's kind of just old school horror meme where if you didn't do one thing in the very beginning of the game, you die later or you can't get the best ending. So, it is that kind of old school hard. But we got it, and now we're going to be able to get our treasure. <laughs> And look, it's a scissor man, but it's a mummified scissor man. That's another uh, scissor. Oh, we have three scissor men now? It's only four from the last game. We can count the amount of scissor men that has been in the games today. Right now we're at four. All right, and now I got a key to the treasure chest right here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to it. But first, we have bats. The bats aren't bouncing either. I don't know why they don't bounce. Maybe they are bouncing. Does flapping count as bouncing? Um... I mean... It could. I think I would count it. Helen, are you okay? Uh, Jennifer. Something You're not terrible. Anyway, anyway, anyone, Helen. There's Helen. What, you think Helen's the scissor man? No, 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 no. She's just not very good at are hiding. Are you all right? Yes. Oh. Well, that's all. well, she was locked in the crate. <laughs> she was bouncing in the crate. I did do Haunting Ground, by the way. I did do Haunting Ground. It was a very fun run. Also, Helen's important because she is one of two characters who know Latin, so if you give her the door spell, she'll translate it for you. But yeah, actually, uh, I did end up doing Haunting Ground. Uh, I've also done Night Trap, uh, The Mummy, Final 2, and Night Cry. So I do a lot of games where people chase after you. They're fun. They're very fun games. It sounds like a spell. Yes, it might be the key to defeating the scissor man. I still have the frog suit in my room. Who's done this game? Uh, well, I've done it here. Uh, Batsuke has done it at RT in Japan. But this game has kind of recently been getting more traction as of 2020-2021. Uh, this game's actually grown a lot. Uh, really, I think, uh, due to Batake recently. Uh, really, the efforts he's put in has been going quite a long way. It's been very nice. 
And Night Trap's more of a challenge run, but I can do it blindfolded, which I use a sock to cover my eyes. So is there anyone in chat who can tell us what Unha Eish means? That's a good question. Hey, I got good RNG, it. by the way. Maybe. Hold on, let's see something. Yeah, we got good RNG. Uh, so really quick, before, before that, uh, if you get the Scissor Man early, you can just go straight here. Uh, this is a planned encounter. Normally, we'd have him summon on the door, but he spawned randomly, which is very unlucky normally, but really good that we got it here. And now we get to sneak into this room. But Carsey, as you were saying? I don't even think that Nuha H is Latin. You're safe. You know, that's actually a good question. I wonder if it's like just gibberish or if it's actual Latin. I don't know. Because we what the game says it is, is to open the door and show me the way. It's just a scratch. I'll be okay if we rest a bit longer. But I don't think that's accurate. I don't know. I was looking at I was looking at the I was looking at the Japanese subtitles as well, and it like says it says the same thing in in Japanese. It's like naha ish. Also, for anyone who's watching uh, Clock Tower it's SNES, cool. we're back to orphan, uh, you know, dead orphan children. It is kind of a theme with these games. I don't know why. Save the ghost of children killed by scissormen, and they sing really fast because of fast speed. <laughs> And also, the ending happens here, but not really. Open the door. Mm -ha -e -shu. Also, weird fact, uh, Carsey, I don't know if you know this. Um, this game has different English voice acting in Japanese and in English. They must be the ghosts of children who were killed here. Wait, oh, so many. it does? Yeah. Is, it, is, 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 the, is the voice acting in English in the Japanese version? I, I mean, I can't, I can't hear because we're over yeah, Discord yeah. right now, so but, I can't um, hear. So, in the Japanese version of the game, there's still English voice acting, but it's different English voice acting for some reason, and I don't know why. Oh. Like, they use different takes, and it actually sounds better than the original game, and I don't know why. Oh, oh, wait, so, so, Bar so Barry Gerda is actually voicing the Japanese version of uh, Clock Tower 2. Correct. Um, he, oh. uh, whoever's the English voice actor does it for both. They just okay. did different takes for some reason, I don't know why. And he was just vibing out. He was uh, chilling in that room, bouncing on the scene. Oh no, I need to go up here. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the maybe the localization was was different. I mean, it was, was did, did was it like was it like the same dialogue or was the? It's slightly different actually. Like it gets the same mood. Like hey, like a good example is uh, when uh, Harris is telling you, hey, uh, the scissor man told me to kill people. Like it sounds better in the Japanese version than the English one. But like the general sentence structure is mostly the same, and it's really really weird. Also, question for everyone. What was it earlier? Sun, moon, or star? Let's see if you guys remember. It was moon. It was moon? Yep. Let's see if chat remembers. I don't think they might. Maybe they will. Because it was moon. If you say anything other than moon, you are incorrect. If you say anything other than moon, you're probably dead. Yep, you will die by water or rats. And yeah, bouncing is just for fun. It's a native setting in the Japanese game that allows you to uh, just kind of look at the wackiness of this game. All right, I'm glad everyone knows Moon. I'm glad everyone knows about the Moon. It becomes squash potatoes. All right, now we get a dagger from this room. That's the whole reason we go here, just for a ceremonial dagger. And also another mummified sister man, but he's bouncing on the scene. All right, but now that we got this, we're actually almost done. There's a few people left uh, that we need saving, but we mostly got everyone, and we're making our way to the grand finale. We'll see who the dastardly scissor man might be. It could be anyone still. The next runs won't be in bouncing mode. It's only for one run. Hmm. Boing, boing, boing. Exactly, it's fun. But I do understand that if we did this for a full four hours, it would get annoying, but I think for one hour, it's pretty, it's pretty funny. The next game will definitely be wackier, I'll tell you that much. Um, I'll have a different level of wacky, but it'll be very, very specific. Anyway, let's see who is in this room. This will be our last survivor to save. I mean, one more person. I think if you just 
go into one wrong room at this point, then Tim just dies or something. And you yeah. Get, yeah, you have to you have to get the matches hey from his body, I think. Tim. And also, we won't have the 100, so Tim is very important. Tim is the most important. He gives you matches. And we need these matches. Oh, yeah? Get this match with you. A match? You'll probably need some light. Thanks, Tim. He's just chilling, bouncing in the room. This is a sequel. A lot of people get confused on the Clock Tower because this is Clock Tower 2. This is, like, directly a year after the original game and is supposed to be a whodunit on who the Scissor Man's back. Who could it be? And then you figure out, oh, it's that. It's them. So who is left now? That is the question. A lot to see. We'll find out who the Scissor Man is in the Grand Unveiling coming up shortly. All we need is a couple more things. We learned about genealogy, and we have to go to this room to open a box to know where a opening is, and then we can do everything. Um, but we just have to go here. As long as you don't hear the Scissor Man music, we're going to be fine, but if we do, we can get rid of him very easily. Extremely easily. And it's probably my favorite way of getting rid of the Scissor Man, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to see it. There we go. Okay, now I can head back. Run, run. There we go. Well, the main reason why the Clock Tower series got kind of wonky was because of the English localization, and they figured a lot of people, um, when this game got to the U.S., wouldn't want to buy a game that had Clock Tower 2. But they just named this game Clock Tower 1, so more people would buy it. But it ended up leading to real confusion, because this is called Clock Tower 1, but the other game's also Clock Tower 1. So it's kind of awkward. It's the dog. Ah, yes. The dog came back. The chandelier came back. They're in cahoots. The chandelier and the dog are working together to torture Jennifer. A random teenage Norwegian girl. The door throw is fun, but I don't know if we're going to be able to see it, sadly. Just because um, we need a Scissor Man spawn to do it. And I don't know how to get one reliably. Normally, I try to avoid having him spawn. And the only way I really know how to get it is just by having him... Um, you wait long enough, but he spawned at a point that was actually really convenient. Exactly, it's like Final Fantasy. I know we're almost done, we just actually need to go to Barden, and we're going to be able to go to the exit. And we're about to find out who done it. Oh my god, we get to see it! Alright, Beep Salt mentioned something. You know what, this is specifically for Beep Salt. We got this one. Carson, you know this one, right? Uh... Which... Uh, my favorite way oh, to get rid of the scissor right, right, yeah, okay. So if you're ever in a bind in the mansion, go to this door. Uh, this actually works, and it's stupid. By the way, just pay attention to the Jennifer during all this. He just dives off the cliff! Oh, those doors to nowhere. This just... I, 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 I seriously died laughing the first time I saw that. Oh, yeah! The best part, though, is you can keep using it. Like, if he comes back, you just go back there, and he'll constantly run off the cliff, and it's hilarious. Doesn't, anyway, doesn't, she, doesn't she run out of stamina over time if you try to keep Uh, going? you can always hit it. As oh. long as you mash fast enough, this game doesn't have the penalty of, uh, failing. Uh, Ghost Head, the next game will actually have a penalty if you're low in stamina, but this game, it, as long as you mash fast enough, you can break anything. Hmm. The downside of this game, though, is running is incredibly awkward. Well, I'm happy we got that. You all got to see the weirdest thing in the game, where she was bouncing on a door and then pulled her own weight up while bouncing. Also, Barden's just chilling here. Yeah, so this is like 10 minutes faster than like the than like the uh, run that I did, like what, three, four years ago? Oh yeah, Batsuke found a lot of improvements in this game, mainly in the not talking to any of the people. Like it's so yeah, weird that that was the improvement, yeah, that's like, but yeah, that's like that's um, like that's like that's like huge. But before that, yeah. I mean, I think it, I think it was like what Pazama who found like some uh, some like some like routing changes. Oh yeah, because I think because I think like uh, I think like a lot of my earlier routing had to do with like uh, with like dealing with like maybe an extra Scissor Man encounter or two. And just like, yeah, yeah. like I think I, I think I definitely had at least like one extra scissor man encounter and just like had a, had a pretty consistent like spawn and it's like, okay, here I'm spawned over here. Let's go ahead and use the door to nowhere and let's continue the, let's continue the run. Exactly. Also, now we know who it is. It's surprisingly enough, the little boy, Edward. So it 
with you, Edward. <laughs> I guess the secret's finally out. I just didn't even know. But my name isn't Edward. It's Dan. So the twist is, this little boy is actually the villain from the first game. This is the orphan meat baby. He's back. There's a little boy inside that mech and he survived. He came back to get revenge for breaking his mech. And uh, we're gonna use the demon idol to send him to hell? I, I don't actually know why this works. The game's lore is kind of uh, wacky, but just enjoy the ending. <laughs> But yeah, this is the little uh, orphan meat mech pilot. He came back for revenge one year later. He found Jennifer and planned this whole thing, including killing an old man for some reason. I don't actually know why, but I'm wondering how Dan knew about the old man. Anyway, time coming up right about now. So let's see, I'll say time when we get it and time. All right, that wasn't bad, that wasn't bad. 55, 51 is not a bad time for this. Now we get to watch the ending and see how it all goes. Don't worry, the bouncing is now done. They'll no longer be bouncing. The bouncing has subsided. They don't bounce during the cutscenes, unfortunately. Can you imagine they're just still bouncing down here? I wonder how oh, many good. maybe days they'll uh, we've been trapped down here. Maybe they'll maybe they'll Look, finally get some it get some rest. Have been more than one night. So quit I could have just trapped in a cage. I guess our number's up, Jennifer. Don't talk Also, like I just that. love the no, PlayStation 1 CGI. I know she will. It was a different era, man. Back yeah, before cutscenes looked human. Well, Glorious uh Glorious lack of mocap. Yep. Oh, you, you, if you want to talk about mocap in a couple of games, we'll, we'll see some mocap. <laughs> I'm actually, kind of wondering, like, what Jennifer, were the, what were the first like, PlayStation games to actually use mocap? I'm not sure. I think I don't know. Like, like I don't know if Resident Evil Two used mocap. Did Metal Gear Solid use mocap? I'm pretty sure Metal Gear Solid used mocap to some degree. Final Fantasy VIII definitely used mocap. All right. But yeah, that's been Clock Tower. We can wait for the, uh, this is a long credit sequence and you can't skip it on the, like, I've never been able to skip this at all. I will buttons you push so it doesn't work. So uh, I'll just do the closing out stuff here. If we wanna see, yeah, you can confirm we did save all seven survivors. Uh, if you really wanna see, we can. But I do wanna say, I do wanna say thank you for watching Clock Tower. I hope you all enjoyed it. I wanna give a special shout out. I see him in chat right there, Batsuke. Batsuke is a legend of the Clock Tower community. I have very high praises for him. I want to thank Carsey and Possum as well for the early routing of this game. And I want to thank you, the viewer. Thank you, chat, for watching this. I hope you enjoyed the bouncing and the Clock Tower series so far. So this is where it gets kind of weird, by the way. So this Clock Tower game was the sequel to the Clock Tower SNES, and the story actually ends here. Like, the story's done. The next two games are, like, weird because they keep going, but they're not at all related to these two games. So we're going to see why the Clock Tower series went downhill. <laughs> Uh, but there's still very fun speedruns and very fun games. I have some very good runners coming up. Um, I, I'm McDysis. I usually host these, but I get to be a runner for once. So I just want to say thank you for watching so far. Uh, if you liked me, you can find me on Twitch. Uh, same name, McDysis. And as well, I'm on Twitter at, uh, McDysis underscore Twitch. As well, my car, uh, my commentator has been Car, uh, Carsey, also known as a Carcinogen, Carcinogen SDA. Thank you for He's done a lot of work in many games. Oh, thank you, Carsey. As well, while we're waiting for these, I just want to mention as well, uh, Carsey here is uh, going to be doing a RE2 run in a couple of weeks for a Resident Evil event that we'll be doing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fun stuff. The, uh, the idea is to hopefully clear Resident Evil 2 remake without taking a hit. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. I think my chances are pretty good, though. I'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, we could wait this out, but uh, I think. I don't know if you need to see it, it's pretty long. I think we can just probably get ready for Ghost Head. But we did see all seven people, we physically saw them, so we'll count it. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to be taking a brief wellness break so we can stand up, stretch our legs. I know I need to, you know, stand up and all that jazz. Um, as well, you know, if you, uh, in case I'm gonna post mine, hold on, there you go. 
We'll be right back very quick. Uh, if you'd like to support Games on Quick, feel free to uh, shoot a sub to the channel. Uh, it does support during the interim, but in between events as well, Prime Gaming also works for that. And you get a lot of fun emotes and ad free viewing. So, we'll be right back with Clock Tower 2, The Struggle Within, also known as uh, probably the, I think the campiest game we'll be doing today. <laughs> and that's a title. Alright, be right back. All right, we're back. So we definitely uh, bounced off the rails in that last run. I know there's a lot. There's a lot of questions for that. It's always a bit confusing, but I think it's a you know a bit of a, a bit of fun, a bit of a has its ups and downs, so to speak. It has us uh, springing for some fun speed running stuff. Uh, but now we're going to be going to a game a little bit sillier than the last game somehow. I don't know how, but this is where the clock tower series gets kind of weird. They wanted to keep making more games after this, so we ended up getting this next one, which I like it. I think it's fun. I think I know I don't like this game, but it's definitely going to be very different in a sense from the last two games. Um, but it should be a fun time uh, nonetheless, and this will be the, the last point and click style game, because after that we go into a new style of game. But we're going to have Pasama with Clock Tower 2 The Struggle and also known as Clock Tower Coast Head. So take it away. And we're back once again. Apologies for those technical difficulties. Uh, we bounced a little bit too hard here behind the scenes, but we are now back. And uh, Paul will be taking it away once again. Uh, also, I do want to mention this really quick. There'll be no bouncing in these next two games. You don't have to worry. I know it looks kind of weird. That there won't be any bouncing. So, Paul, would you like to continue? Yeah, I'm going to shake my fist with all that bouncing. It, it knocked my my stuff off. Shake, shake my fist all that bouncing that happened. Exactly. We can blame the bouncing. It's okay. Oh. <sighs> Oh, this, this old person is too young to party like that. Oh my goodness. Anywho. <laughs> ah, so, Clock Tower Ghost Head. This is the one that, you know, takes the title Clock Tower and that's it and runs away with it. It has nothing to do with the other games. Um, I do have commentary to help me with this. Uh, the good old Faizu, this random cat that just showed up. Uh, his name's Faizu. <laughs> Uh, you, you say I'm here to help you with this. I feel like I'm probably here more to waffle incoherently and distract you with this, but, you know, whatever works. You know, that that's normally how the commentary between us works, usually, <laughs> and it, it seems like it works out in the long run anyways. <laughs> well, fingers crossed, then. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, indeed. So, Faizu, have you had experience with this lovely, fantastic, superb, phenomenal game? Unfortunately, yes. Yes, I have. Oh. Um, I like this game. I think it's weird that this is somehow the least Clock Tower of any of the Clock Tower games. Um, despite the fact that Clock Tower 3 is... I'm not going to spoil it because it's coming up next, but it's practically a magical girl adventure. Uh, and yet this is somehow less Clock Tower than that for reasons which you will discover throughout this run. Yeah, that, that is interesting you bring that up because 3 does have a, like a smidge tie-in to Clock Tower 2. This has absolutely nothing to do with it, but we should get into it. Now, people were mentioning the frog suit in chat. I can one-up you guys. With the instead of the frog suit, let me enter special code in. Um, so this special code, I need to hit L one, R two. Oh god, I need more hands or fingers. L one, R two, select square, uh, and then start. All right, so let's hope it works. Now, one thing I'm gonna do: make sure cut scenes we can skip. That's one thing this game has compared to the previous Clock Towers. I can skip cut scenes. Um, so with that, we can skip cutscenes. We are, I am, yeah, words are fantastic. I'm still going to show you guys some cutscenes, though. Um, because some of those cutscenes in this game are just fantastic. We are so hopefully, going to be watching the best and finest of cutscenes, though. Don't worry. So hopefully my lovely cheat code I entered worked. We will see as soon as I start the game. So timer starts in three, two, one, go. So basically, the plot, we pl our main heroine, Alyssa, arrives at her uncle and aunt's place to stay there. And then spookiness starts to happen. All the spooks. We're going to skip these cutscenes, though, because they're, they're too spooky. Ah, it did work. All right, so Alyssa's wearing the monkey suit costume. So this is the monkey suit. Um, so we're going to explore the, the house right now. Um, we're just in the bathroom right now. We're just going to check this foot. Uh, she doesn't know it's a foot, but I mean, we do have a leg up on her. We know it's a foot. <laughs> ah. 
Sorry, I had to. <laughs> it's par for the course. Yep. So we're going to check this other bathroom, and we're going to look in the lovely tub here. You're going to notice that we're flicking light switches, which is a thing that's going to happen a lot in this game. Uh, it's really obsessed with having you turn on light switches in basically every room you go into. Yes, quite a bit. Um, you have to hit the light switch to turn the lights on, or you can't explore the room at all. It's very frustrating, especially in a casual playthrough. Um, I will bring up casual yeah, playthroughs quite a bit, um, because a lot of people who have played this only played this game casually and up to a certain point and possibly through the controller across <laughs> the room. Um, we're gonna go to this lovely arm. It's, it's, it's doing a dance. It's very the excited to be on boobies. Games Done Quick. Like, super excited, guys. Uh, sorry, Pfizer, you were saying? I was just saying the arm, the arm just gives us an undead boogie, which is not the only undead boogie we are going to be seeing That's in this true. game. That's true, that's um, true. There is, there is quite a lot of dancing in this game. It's very good. Yeah, there is. All right, so basically this beginning part is just kind of a mini tutorial. Um, you're exploring the mansion. A lot of places you can't open up quite yet, but the game's kind of doing the whole, hey, you should go into this room. We're going to teach you this mechanic. Hey, you should go into this room. We're going to teach you this mechanic. So we're just going to go examine this lovely chair here. No. Oh, no. Ashley. Wait, that's a chair? Yeah. I always thought it was like a suitcase or something. No, it's a chair. What? There's a TV in front of the chair. Where are his legs? My amulet? There, there, it, it's, you just, no, I don't, don't, don't ask. ask. <laughs> and once again, this is not the most nonsensical thing about this game. So the game introduced Bates. Um, he is Alyssa's other half, the evil side. Um, there is a big plot with Bates, but all you gotta know is Bates is cool. He's also a jerk. Um, whenever like Alyssa, him. oh, sorry. Oh, I was, I was like how people compare him to I think the the JoJo stands. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people do that very often for this game. So yeah, um, the purple aura around Alyssa signifies that it's Bates. Now, we're going to pick up an amulet that Alyssa dropped that's going to uh, seal Bates. Um, thus, we're back to Alyssa. This mechanic is fantastic and terrible all at the same time. <laughs> um, yeah, other than light switches, this game is going to make you uh, pick up and put down the amulet all the time. Yeah, because the game, will, game expects... Yeah. <laughs> The game expects you to do certain requirements as Alyssa and then switch over to Bates and do certain things there in order to complete chapters. Um, we did hear a noise, though. We're going to go into this room here. Uh, this, is, this is important plot right now. So we're going to go in this room. And oh my goodness, there's a burglar in the corner, guys. He's trying to take the TV. Oh, wait. No, it's not. It's Uncle Philip. Oh, Hi, Uncle Philip. Philip. We don't know why he's at the... TV. I think he's trying to fix the TV to watch his daily um, soap operas. That's my only guess. Uh, we're gonna go. That makes about as much sense as anything. Yeah, we're gonna go to the samurai armor here, and the samurai armor does come to life. We have to do this. It's the most dumbest flag <laughs> in this entire game. If you want the best <laughs> ending, you have to poke that thing. You wanna? Yeah, if you oh, would. I was going to say, you would think that having making samurai armor chase you around the house and try to kill you is arguably a bad move and a thing that you shouldn't do. But no, that's absolutely 100% required if you don't want to get a bad ending. Yeah, if you don't, you are locked into one ending and this ending will take you all the way to the very end of the game and just throw you into a brick wall and like you can't go and fix anything. You're just stuck in that ending. Yeah, you, you make it to the final chapter of the game and then uh, effectively the samurai armor just falls through the roof and kills you. Yep. Um, that's it. Yep. Um, and then you have to start the game over from scratch because the flag to do it is right at the beginning and that happens right at the end. So do you guys like Easter eggs? I do. I'm going to show you guys two e Easter eggs. One referring to Clock Tower 2. The other one actually to Clock Tower 3. You're, you'll see when you get to Clock when Tower you say, 3. When you say it's Clock it's Tower 2, uh, do you mean... Clock Tower uh, PlayStation? The, the PlayStation one, because when you look at the poster, it's Clock Tower 2. Now the piano, listen to the music here. Keep in mind, remember the song. What? The 
piano. <laughs> All right, so do you remember that? Um, now, when you're watching Clock Tower 3, I highly recommend watching that speed run. Try, you, you hear it in Clock Tower 3. Anywho. All right. Let's go um, back into the dining room because we have a bedroom key. So now we can open up this spooky, spooky bedroom. Also, uh, really quick, I don't know if you've uh, seen it, Pa, but... Uh... Uh, I kind of mentioned him during the last run, but Batsuke blew this game open for, like, ending M and ending A as well. Yeah, um, he... A, a lot of the stuff he did was pretty wild with it. Yeah, he did. I was going to give a shout-out later on, because, yeah, he's definitely optimized the route and gave this this game, and also Clock Tower 2, kind of a nice, fresh breath air for, like, a whole new route, like, routing in that. Oh. Oh. Um, we're going to watch this, fan this fantastic cutscene, though. Okay, Bates. Thanks, Bates. You could you could walk a little faster, Bates. No? Okay. I, I can't get over the fact that Stephanie sounds like a pull string doll. <laughs> that little monster. So another important thing you have to do in this game in order to get the best ending is lock this door. It's a dumb mechanic, but you have to do it in order to get the best ending. <laughs> yeah, that's also another really, really silly one because... Well, just remember that we've locked that door. Just bear that in mind. Yeah, we locked the door. Now we're back to Alyssa, because we are done with Bates and getting all of the little flags in order to finish this chapter. So we're going to turn on the lights, because we can't see or interact with anything. We're going to talk to the ant. And then we're going to go approach this lovely oil canister here. And we're just gonna grab the oil and leave. And now we gotta go back into the bedroom. Now you have you have to talk to the ant first in order to go back into the bedroom because currently um, Stephanie is locked in there, um, and there is a note we have to look at in order to complete this chapter. So let's go get that. It, uh, <coughs> it is worth noting that right now you might be wondering why I said this is the least clock tower of any of the clock tower games uh, because so far this is ticking a lot of the boxes we've got point and click adventuring we've got a uh, pint sized lunatic trying to kill us um, we're in kind of a creepy house uh, you know it's this is all very clock tower don't worry it gets very not clock tower very soon yep after this this chapter <laughs> the game just kind of spirals downhill and kind of e explodes yeah. Although speaking of like houses and locations, uh, did you know this takes place? I believe it's like what California, but it's uh, the house is a Japanese style house. It's a little, really confusing. It's the uh, the Phoenix yeah, Wright in... one. All right. Yes, it exactly that. <laughs> in the Western version, this is uh, this is in California. In the Japanese version, this is Osaka, I think. I I, I believe so. Yeah. So the samurai armor. Oh, nice. He randomly pops up. On the upper floor, we just said hi, politely walk past him. Um, we noticed that this evil statue's missing, and there's Uncle Phil being like, I'm Uncle Phil. It's dangerous here. Maxwell, curse. Take this key. Go hide in the basement. Okay, bye. Yes, there is a curse. It's called the Maxwell curse. Well, actually, wait a minute. I'm kind yeah, of curious. Uh, why did they name him Uncle Phil in the peak of Freshman Prince of Bel-Air? Because uh, <laughs> Uncle Phil is cool and awesome. But we, we already have the Uncle Phil. Like Everyone's going to think Uncle Phil at that, won't they? Well, Alyssa keeps thinking um, this Uncle Phil is good. Even though he runs a, a pharmaceutical company and he's being investigated and he may be evil, he's actually, Alyssa thinks he's really cool. So it makes sense that, you know, sticking with the Uncle Philip name. <laughs> also a fizzy, you were saying? I can't remember. Sorry about that. So Nothing important, don't worry. 
So Uncle Philip uh, mentioned the Maxwell curse, uh, that Alyssa's curse, and just try to um, strangle her. We broke off. We got away. Um, and then here's Uncle Philip on the ground. Um, he, he had the evil statue. The statue is cursed as well. And oh yeah, evil statue. That's another nice little clock tower uh, continuity thing. It's a different statue, but well, I mean, that's another recurring it, element in the series. It could be the same statue. I mean, this one's painted yellow, so I mean, and it's the golden statue, so it could be like the limited edition, only five copies in existence statue. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that uh, it was it was Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince who brings up the Maxwell curse for reasons that once again will be discovered later on. So now we're gonna. The plot in this game doesn't make a great deal of sense. Uh, so now we're gonna burn the statue. Of course, we got this I very tense uh, event happening where we must burn the statue. So we gotta do the order proper. So it goes golden statue, and she's got deep pockets, okay? Um, oil can. It's nice that it lets you buffer the inputs. Yes, it's, it's really nice. All right, there's Bates being all. Bates is a big fan of kicking small children. Yeah. And um, Bates Stephanie... just stabbed a child. Protect Stephanie's me. fine. She she got knocked down, but she'll get up again because nothing's gonna keep her down. Yes. Let's be real, though. The stabbing isn't nearly as hilarious as Bates just kicking her in the face casually. All right, that's so that's... This is chapter Stephanie, one. I'm sorry. After this chapter, everything goes downhill. We won't be showing a whole lot yeah. of cutscenes because after this, it becomes very dry and, like, tedious. And chapter two is very special with the tedious part. Um, yeah, chapter two is where we have lots and lots of semi... Or seemingly random event flags scattered all over the place. Uh, but yeah, that's the good bit of the game out of the way. Now for the rest of it. Yep, yep. All right, so now we're in the hospital. Um, I forget what the... This this chapter's like called Noisy Cage or something like that. It's a really weird name. Um, I think all of the chapters except for the final one have really weird names, strangely enough. Yeah. So the specific things I need to stare at in order to get out of this place, it's dumb. Um, if you don't do it, you can't leave. You're stuck in here till you figure it out. You can also softlock yourself in this game if you don't do things proper. This chapter's terrible. Uh, you also see the other thing that's terrible. So first flag is this door. We're going to stare at it. We're going to get a spooky voice. Alyssa's going to go gasp. And then we're going to continue. We're going to get our first chase uh, enemy. You hear the dramatic music. I hope it's Scissor Man. I mean, this is a clock tower game, right, guys? Um, we're going to grab this. You think so? We're going to grab this legendary chair. We, I like to call it the wrestling chair of, Sl of SmackDown. And we're going to see our chase here, our, our, our enemy, our chaser, a stalker. It's a zombie. Yep. <laughs> Just a regular um, zombie. You... Arkham zombie. Yeah, who who then melts into the floor when uh, hit with a chair. Yep. Um, I did briefly try to calculate how much force Alyssa has to hit him <laughs> with with that chair for that to happen, but the maths was too much for me. And math is forbidden too, so I mean, yeah. Precisely. <laughs> I'm assuming a lot. So we need to knock the zombie because I need to get a key from her. Uh, there's RNG that she will either get up and chase you or she'll stay on the ground. We'll deal with her in a second. I totally forgot to do something in this other room. Go me. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to go back into here. And I got to talk to this gentleman here. Uh, he's a reporter. He's investigating. That's about it. That's all you need to know about him. He's a reporter. He's investigating. 
that's it. That's his only purpose in this game. Anywho, let's go. Only purpose in life. It's it's his driving personality trait. Yeah. Um, it's it's all he wanted to do since he was a child. <laughs> all right. So now we're gonna deal with a zombie. Now we can't use the chair. The chair unfortunately retired after that wrestling match with the zombie. So we're gonna get a ultimate weapon for dealing with zombies. <laughs> now this is very powerful during a zombie outbreak. I I, w I would recommend it, but maybe not um, during an actual outbreak. So what this ultimate weapon is, it's a broom. So get ready. You're going to see the ultimate weapon at work here. There you go. And guess what? There's another zombie. So guess what we're going to use? Because brooms are a renewable source i said that word fantastic but we can reuse this over and over again so let's let's see an act, instant replay again of the broom fighting the zombie this restroom this restroom is is just full of uh plus five brooms of undead smiting it, and uh, yes. it's it's fantastic it's very very useful it's good that they place this here in this hospital full of zombies oh yes i mean plus the janitor who decided to leave that there at the end of his shift, bless his heart. All right, so this is our next flag in order to get out of here. We can look at the third washroom stall. It's dumb. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna hear me say that a lot about this chapter. Um, we're this gonna chapter head over here. has this chapter has a lot of very very strange things that you are absolutely required to do uh, to progress. And good luck figuring some of them out, like looking at the sink and things like that. Yeah, speaking of sink, that's the next flag we need to do is look at the sink and get spooked after 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 turning on the light switch of course because this is a clock tower game and we have to turn on all of the light switches yep yep oh those f and the worst part is i didn't mention this but the mouse cursor will actually look Oh, we're having mild technical uh, difficulties, but we are back very quick. It is back, I believe, but let's see what happens. <laughs> we are back. Uh, sorry about that. It was just minor technical difficulties. We're having uh, some issues with all the zombies around, so we should be back, I believe. Yes, we should. Okay. I think we're good to go. I'm gonna re resume the game. Let's get this going. Sorry about that, guys. So, no we got a zombie following us. We're not gonna go to the broom. Nay, the broom is too far. We're gonna we're gonna do the quick to go method, the fast food way, the wrestling chair smackdown. This is actually secretly a wrestling game, isn't it? Kinda. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go up. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, do I go upstairs? Sorry. <laughs> nope, I need to stay here. So I got a little derailed there. It's all right. You've got this. All right, so we're going to encounter the zombie, but we're actually going to become baits. So we're going to do... The best dance in this entire game, guys. The zombie dance. We're going to dance with the zombie. I said there was going to be more dancing earlier. I was not lying. Yep, we got... It's not just the arms that dance. We get to dance, too. Yep. All right. So I'm going to quickly hop into here. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because when you defeat a zombie or you attack a zombie, you can... Uh, Alyssa or Bates will walk back to the pre the previous room you entered in. So once I kill the zombie, we're going to go back to the elevator. Now, Bates is the only one that can use guns. Just going to toss that out there. Uh, Alyssa can't. She can pick up guns and acquire the guns and put them in the inventory, but she can't use them. Bates is the only one that can use the guns. It's, yeah. 
So uh, can you can you tell that this is a clock tower game yet with uh, pharmaceutical companies and zombies and pistols? Um, no, it's it's very clearly clock tower. It's it's following all of the traditions of the series. Yep. Why is she dressed like a monkey? Why not? <laughs> Where that this is the one that doesn't have very burden, but the other one did have very hey. burden. Hmm. I mean, in fairness, Barry Burton would improve this game tenfold. I was gonna say that, yeah. Huh. Everyone likes Barry. They do. That they do. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk to the Zolfi doctor. I'm just gonna skip that dialogue. But he's kind of lost it uh we we pushed Bates pushed him over and he's just gonna sit there on the floor just kind of lying there he's he's wiggling he's he's doing his own dance yeah all right so let's head back downstairs all right so you know the zombies and how they exist and how we defeat them with brooms and chairs and guns the game's going to introduce a new mechanic with the zombies i hate this mechanic so much it, it turns it turns out that these are actually deterministic zombies um i think that's that's the right phrase to use there i i may be wrong i'm sure someone in chat will correct me but uh yeah we're gonna discover a new mechanic which completely invalidates all the ways we've been killing them so far so by reading that document, we find out that this is not a curse. Oh, I didn't get the maneuver. Uh, this isn't a curse. This is actually um, a parasite that is living in it's the host. And in order to permanently kill the zombie, you have to shoot where the parasite is. So guess what? RNG of where is the parasite on the zombie? So you got to wait till the cursor flashes red. I'm going to try that. Nope, not the feet. Oh my goodness. Where is that parasite? Okay, I got to move. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna play this lovely game of where in the world is this parasite so we can actually get rid of the zombie. Oh, right there. So this this is why I said that it's it's oh. kind of deterministic. Um it's at least it's true to zombie law that you have to destroy the, the brain, kill the zombie. It's just that the brain can be located in any part of the body because it's actually the parasite's brain. Okay. But yeah, prior to reading that note, we could kill the zombies with one shot anywhere on the body. But as soon as we read that note, um, it turns out that, no, we have to kill them by shooting a very specific point. So, deterministic zombies. All right, if I you gotta... don't read the note, then just shoot them anyway. Okay, I gotta maneuver away from the zombie. So don't mind me. And yes, it's entirely RNG where the, the spot on the zombie is every single time. Um, what you really don't want is for it to be on the foot because you usually kind of scan downwards with the cursor um, and the cursor locking on and sticking to things and it's a little bit finicky as well. Yeah, and the worst part with the zombies too, if I need to move them, sometimes they just like to take their sweet time. Oh, there you are, and I'm dead. <laughs> the game does have the health. The red cursor implies that I have one hit away from dying. Uh, orange is you have two, white, you're in fine health. Um, so yeah, I just gotta move the, this. Hmm? The advantage of dying in this game is that it basically just takes you back to the start of the room and gives you an extra health level. Yeah. So it's it's not really a big setback to die. No, although maneuvering this this guy is gonna be a little bit of a butt, but that's fine. Because, yeah, they just take a while. I think you need you you need a, a PlayStation mouse of your own, I think, Pa. I, I think that would help with the I aiming. actually do. Um, I have a PlayStation mouse. Um, ha, I just Have you played this with one? I believe I have a while back. The one thing I still don't have is the SC2 um, controller, which is a one-handed controller that is actually recommended to play with Clock Tower 2 as well as Clock Tower The Struggle Within and or Ghost Head. Recommended by who? Uh, the instruction manual and game advertisements <laughs> that advertised this game back in the day. Sorry, this is going into like ancient Wait, pop did you say talk. the manual? Yeah, if I remember Which correctly. Which manual? Ghost Head or uh, Struggle R2? I believe Clock Tower. Or Struggle so the, or the PS1. 
if I remember correct, you're going by my memory, which I mean, I'm getting old, so my memory's kind of, you know, right. going the way Let's of the... Let's read Japanese. Um, I but yeah, read I, Japanese. Back in the day, when I discovered Clock Tower series, I remember going through an old game fan magazine and discovering Clock Tower. Not this game, but the PlayStation Clock Tower. Uh, we need that. Yeah, this is a very confusingly named series. Oh, yes. I'll complain about that shortly, but carry on, Pa. Um, and I remember the advertisement for Clock Tower and them being like, it's recommended that you get the C2 controller. Yay. Ah, uh, good memories. <laughs> did that actually get released in the West then? It did. You can actually find it on eBay. I still haven't bought one yet, but they do exist. Okay, I'm... I'm gonna have to go and look up this controller afterwards just to see what this looks like okay. and try to imagine how awful this would be to play. Um, really weird though, uh, I looked in the manual for at least the last game, Clock Tower 2 or Clock Tower PS1, and it has a picture of the PS1 mouse in there telling you how to use it. Let me oh, check really? Ghost Head, I'm kinda curious, because I have the manual for that. <laughs> see, I would I would love to reach my games, but they're pretty far away, so I can't really like, I still feel like I, it's in there, so I, I apologize. I'll check the ghost head one right now and see if there's a picture of it in there. Okay. All right, so we're just so getting... in terms of... Oh. Continue. Uh, we're just getting the flags done for Alyssa here now. Hopefully I got everything. Um, this this cutscene will let me know if I can advance or not. Yeah, I can. Um, so by getting all those little flag points of the spookiness, we get introduced to Shannon. Um, we're just skipping the cutscenes with Shannon. Uh, just know that she really, really, really doesn't like us. And she really doesn't like... Shannon... Oh. Shannon is practically the secondary antagonist of this game, and she will not actually be appearing in this speedrun because we skip every cutscene she's in, and I don't think she ever turns up in actual gameplay. Uh, she does. We see her, like, sitting on a chair and, uh... Oh, that's right. Yeah, and then at the very end. Um, yeah. That part's kind of spoiler territory, though. But we're going to talk to the reporter, and the reporter's like, hey, we should. I'm going to head to the research lab. I heard I heard there's evil stuff happening. Do you want to come? You want to say yes, because that's going to send you away from this evil, dumb hospital to the final chapter. Um, so, Which is also evil and dumb. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go into here. We're going to use this lovely backdoor key. So yeah, this this is definitely a clock tower game and not a Resident Evil game, despite the fact that we have firearms and zombies and the end of the game takes place in a secret research lab. I mean, I love that you mentioned that because we're going to watch this lovely cutscene and I love that you mentioned that it's totally not a Resident Evil with oh, the zombies no, and everything <laughs> like that. Cause... This is like the exact moment the game jumps the shark. Like, the franchise jumps the shark in this exact cutscene. <laughs> it's more so like after chapter one is when it says... The shark jumps, flies into space, and, you know, yeah. It was redeemable until this exact moment. <laughs> At this point, it is all just accepting the camp. So, do you do you guys like dealing with zombies? Do you guys like your outbreaks? Alyssa's gonna pass out here, guys. And now we get to play as this cool dude. And guess what? Minigame! So this is a mini, mini game with a shotgun. This is a mini game. So basically we need to just shoot the zombies. Now these zombies, unlike other zombies during an outbreak are very polite. Uh, they take their time. They come in one by one. They don't run because it's rude. They walk. I mean, they still want to eat your brains, but they're going to do it very politely. And yeah, I'm, I'm not even convinced they want to do that. I mean, it looks like they're trying to just get past you. It's just sort of, excuse me, sir, I'm trying to go into the hospital if you if you don't mind. That is very. And then you shoot them with a shotgun. That's very true. You know, you know the um, the worst and the funniest part though. Hmm. So I figured this out because I've had some bad RNG here, some good RNG. Uh, the only one that's programmed to attack you is the like the first one in the line. So it goes yep. like one, two, three, right? So if like three gets closer to you before one does, they will actually walk backwards because they realize it's not their turn to attack you. <laughs> so oh my just like, oh, wait a minute, not my turn. Walk back to the entrance or just wander around until you kill one. That is fantastic. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. No, it's we'll terrible see. and I love uh, it. Playing this casually, this part, I'm not gonna lie, when I played this first casually, I died a lot to this part. <laughs> you have to kill 30 of them. <laughs> yeah, speedrun wise, you're, <laughs> 
this is a nice little break from everything. Um, I mean, granted, you gotta kill, kill zombie. Please let me kill a zombie because that'd be very embarrassing if I died here. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, oh, a last zombie, guys. All right, let's cherish this moment. <laughs> All right, so final chapter. Um, I, I, there's a lot I need to do in this chapter. I may be awkwardly staring in my notes. Um, just, just, there's gonna be a lot of running through hallways. Um, so I may be- That's, 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 that's fine. It's, it's 5.30 a.m. here. I can ramble incoherently that... with the best of them to fill that uh, space. Okay. I'm, that's, I mean, I, I, I feel terrible that it's 5.30 in the morning. You should really be in bed, but I appreciate it at the same time. Oh, it's fine. I, I wouldn't miss this for the world. All right. So yeah, we're at the laboratory that is run by Uncle Philip. He's he's a good guy though. He totally wouldn't do some evil stuff in his lab. Just saying. <laughs> um I, I mean it's it's a pharmaceutical company and a secret research lab in a horror game involving zombies run by uh, someone related to the protagonist. So there's no way there can be anything bad happening here. He's totally a good guy. Oh yeah, totally a good guy. Um, I would like to point out, if I went into the room on the left there, in that weird little uh, square place, uh, you would have found the reporter, and he would have been dead in a box. Uh, so he's, yeah, he's no longer around. Rip, rip reporter. Uh, but I'm going to open this door, and we're going to get our first actual, like, actual serious stalker character. Uh, so this is uh, the guy on the cover, like, the, the mask. We don't know his name, but if you're playing this casually, the game tells you in brackets. His, in brackets, his name is Maxwell. Uh, and he's yes, it pops up in the in the subtitles of the cutscene. Yep, and he's weak against chairs, so we're just gonna whack him with a chair. And we're gonna continue our adventure. At least he doesn't melt. I mean, I would. I, I think I would have died laughing if he actually melted. Oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> kind of horrifying. Just a full-grown man melts because a little girl hits him with the chair. So do you guys miss zombies? Because they're back with a fiery passion. They need to get revenge for what happened in the hospital. Do we? Do we have a broom of smiting this time? No. It. We actually have its cousin, the fire extinguisher. <gasps> oh, the fire extinguisher is smiting is just as good. Yeah. I mean, it puts out fires and zombies. That's just a multi-purpose tool. That's why it's important to have one installed in every building, just in case of zombie outbreaks. Yep. And I guess fires. Yep. I mean, I have a fire extinguisher in my house. Hopefully you guys have fire extinguishers in your house that are also up to date. PSA safety note. <laughs> Remember- They only kill zombies if they're up to date. Yep. PSAs today, proper fire extinguisher keeping, use soap. Those are the two things we've learned today. If you've taken anything away from today's optics, those yep. two things. I mean, look forward to Clock Tower 3. You may learn some further PSA useful information. We might. I dread, I, I dread to think of what anyone would learn from Clock Tower 3. Uh, magical girls are powerful? Anime, I suppose. Anime, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I want to repeat that again. I still feel like this is somehow less of a clock tower game than that. <laughs> it's it's worth it's worth noting actually that this is, um, uh, if I'm correct, this is actually considered a spin-off game in Japan. Over there, it's not a numbered clock tower game. It's just called Clock Tower Ghost Head. Yeah. While over here, it is Clock Tower Two: The Struggle Within. Um, so while the series lines up again at Clock Tower Three. Both countries kind of argue about which one the first and the second game are, and whether this game is actually part of the numbered series. So guys, quickly say hi to Shannon. She's sitting on the chair. Say hi. Now say bye. Because she's, she's, she's gone in a flash. Well, she's still there, oh. but I mean, yeah. We're, we're not watching that cutscene. Nope. Nope. Too important. <laughs> Chai's we're not going to watch any of the actual important cutscenes, except probably the last one. What, um, what we will watch is chairs being thrown at zombies. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna hit the lovely light here. Every time it's just Alyssa over the head with the steel chair. Oh my god! <laughs> she she is pretty strong. Like to be able to lift the chair like that, to turn like that, too, no less, and to throw the chair. Like I mean, oh, she's got a lot of like muscles. She never missed leg day either. I'm guessing. 
if if that chair weighs half as much as the chair that I'm sitting on right now, that's really, really impressive. And speaking All... of chairs, guys, guess what we get to do again? <laughs> All I've learned is that the real struggle within is Alyssa's will to kill people with chairs, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> do I want to do uh, it today? Yeah, the, yes. The, the whole thing about this game is that, uh, you know, it's supposed to be Bates, who's the, the psychopathic murdery one, but no, it's, it's Alyssa just... <laughs> Beating things with chairs. <laughs> Alyssa. Brooms, <laughs> fire extinguishers. Oh, although I saw someone's post in chat, Stone Cold, Alyssa Stone Cold, whatever wrestling <laughs> name you want to insert after that. <laughs> By the way, another thing I want to mention, because I was just mentioning on Stone Cold, but I guess slightly on topic, off topic, but the worse a Clock Tower game is, the better the music is. Just keep that in mind. I don't know why this is. It just I'll kind of is the weird inverse property of Clock Tower games. Also, Eck, I, I have to ask then, which one do you think is the worst Clock Tower game? Um, honestly, I think it depends. Uh, probably Ghost Head, probably this one. Uh, Clock I, Tower 3, I, I think, has worse scaling, and I, there's one issue I think is worse than this game, but I think as a whole, I would say this game, just because this higher... If you're playing this casually, this entire lab looks all the same, and it's way too easy to get lost. As well, the amount of things that are like, oh, hey, we have 13 endings. Wait, no, they're all just glorified game overs. Oh, wait, no. So speaking of alleys, I, I kind of flubbed up. I actually need that zombie, so we need to go find a zombie. I may have flubbed up a bit, but that's okay. You may have killed them all. Uh, no, I think there's... Ah, there he is. Spook! <laughs> there is, uh... <laughs> I don't think I've seen that before. I'm glad he was just waiting <laughs> there. Jesus. I mean, he really wanted to spook everybody. Like... You gotta, you gotta have, you gotta let the zombies have some fun, okay? They're getting chairs thrown at them. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's that's another one of the irritating things about this is needing to be baits for particular things and thus having to kind of go into struggle modes to trigger baits and. Yeah, that's the only way you can really switch over to baits is being attacked by like a zombie or something like that. Um. So, like, if you run out of zombies, you're kind of stuck. Um, I mean, there is... I think... Hmm? I was going to say, there's there's one you can kind of respawn by continually going in and out of a room, isn't there? Yeah, I... there is. I think it's on a timer, but, I mean... Yeah, that, that takes time, and we're doing this quickly, except for silly cutscenes, so... Indeed. All right, so, we had to interact with that locker. Excuse me. We're based to realize he, he it's locked and he needs something to pick lock it. So we're gonna we're gonna examine this limb for a wire. You can only do this as baits, and you have to do this in order to progress the the, the game. It's a silly mechanic. Yeah, there are a lot of things in this that don't actually make sense in terms of uh, having to do these things as baits or Alyssa, and this is one of them. All right, so we got the item we need. So let's head to the elevators. So yeah, it's going to be just a lot of hallway wandering, waddling right now. Uh, Unfortunately, it's it's the joys of this research lab where everything looks exactly the same and yeah. it's gigantic and very samey and there are Slightly fewer stupid event flags than the hospital, but this is still not a good part of this game. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if you thought the castle and clock tower for PlayStation slash clock tower 2 is bad, this takes the cake. Like, in a casual, if you're first time playing this casually, you're going to pull your hair out because this gets confusing after a while. Um, like, it's really unfortunate. I highly recommend if you do play this casually, one... Uh, emulate it because the price for this game is just going up and it's kind of expensive uh, to have a guide ready. I would definitely agree with uh, with having a, a walkthrough handy just so that you can avoid some of the event flags akin to uh, the suit of armor in the first stage, which would be killing us fairly soon, I think, if we hadn't examined it. Yeah, so basically you would enter these doors, you would look at this, and then the samurai armor would just crash from the ceiling onto you, and that's game over. That's how you die. Yep. And that, that, that counts as an ending, and uh, to get past that, you have to restart the entire game. Um, 
and examine the samurai armor in the first chapter. Yeah, the game locks you into that ending. It's very frustrating. Um, I think for ca like casual players, I think a lot of people got that ending, and I think a lot of people threw the game out the window. Um, <laughs> the one of the weird things about this, I think that to get the to get the files on all of the characters, which give you background information on them, I think you have to get every single ending in this game to unlock those. Yeah, and um, I. And they, they actually explain more than the game does in some respects, like what's going on with the samurai armor. Yeah, I mean, if you if you want to spoil that, by all means, um, it's, yeah, it's kind of, I wouldn't say dumb. But well, like... I mean, it's, it's, uh, when the, um, when the statue was brought into the house and, uh, everyone started getting cursed with the zombie parasite thing, um, Alyssa's older cousin uh, hid in the statue, but the statue also had some of the poison in it. Oh, well, sorry, he hid in the samurai armor, but it had some of the poison in it, so then he went insane as well. Um, but for some reason, only starts chasing you if you examine the samurai armor. Ah, yes, that's what happens when you get infected with a zombie disease. You decide to go to your dad's research lab, climb really high up, and wait for someone <laughs> to fall underneath you so you can fall on them like an anvil. Yep. Exactly. In fairness, it's good It's like, good writing. I can't think of anything scarier than that. I'd be terrified if that happened. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. This game has some questionable decisions. Let's let's just put it that way. Yeah, I don't remember all the endings. Like this game, I think we mentioned had thirteen endings. That's just way too much. Um, and yeah, it's it's not like they're it's not like they're interesting endings. Like in the first two Clock Tower games, a lot of them are okay. You didn't save this person, so the ending is a little more bittersweet or something like that. Well, yeah. uh, but no, in this game, you have I think one good ending, and the rest of them are all just and then you die. Yeah. yeah. Although I do want to mention something about this game and many games like this, because I we had uh, several quote unquote bad games on this show. But very often with a game like this, I uh, like I know personally I like to show a big reverence to these things. And they do anything better than I can ever make. And as well, there's a lot of heart in these games to some extent. They're very fun, and overall we do like them. But uh, they can have some Absolutely. flaws still. I don't want to point that out though. Like even though we rag on these games, it's like. Hey, we still enjoy them. They're pretty fun. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we we wouldn't run them if they if if we didn't enjoy them. Um, I think anyone who's who's heard my voice before or or recognizes my name knows that uh, I thoroughly enjoy bad games for what they are. Um, I I will make fun of them quite a lot, but there's usually something to love about them. That's that's what makes a good bad game is if there is something really interesting or fascinating about it if it tries to do something. Uh, in this case, I think what it tried to do was be a bit more like Resident Evil, which didn't really work, unfortunately. I mean, it worked in regards to using chairs as weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Although one of the weird things this is, is um, uh, Fumi Kono didn't actually have anything to do with this game. Like, at this point, he uh, stopped doing Clock Tower games, which is also yeah. why I think the series changed as much as it did. Yeah, basically, when Cl think... after Clock Tower 2 came out, the Clock Tower team disbanded, and this was just a entirely different team that created this. I I believe they asked him to do another Clock Tower game, and he basically said that he, he felt he was tapped out and there wasn't anything more he could really do with it, so yeah, they shuffled it over to another team, and we got this. And uh, as a game, I think the biggest flaw that this game really does have is, and this happened to a lot of games, I want to say around the late 90s, uh, it's, hey, Resident Evil did good, and we kind of hinted this a few times, like, oh, zombies, lab, guns? Yeah. A lot of games wanted to be Resident Evil around this time. Um, you can see this thing was like about Parasite 2, uh, Clock Tower 2, The Struggle Within. There's a lot of games that kind of was like, hey, what if we uh, amped up the action a little bit and made it more like Resident Evil? But, yep. yeah. I was going to say, you forgot, Not, you forgot to bring up the other Resident Evil clone, Countdown Vampires, just to bring that game up. <laughs> Although one game that I do want to show reference to that is not a Resident Evil clone, surprisingly, is a game called Overblood. Oh, Overblood. Technically, Overblood. that game was more of a clone of another game called Bach Hauser, which uh, was a part of the Awful Block uh, a couple years back. <laughs> and 
it's really weird because technically it's not an RE clone. People think it is, but it's actually not. It's just so wild. All right, I'm going to interrupt you guys. So we're entering this place. Oh, hey, there's Maxwell. Let's just say hi to him. Let's, let's just say hi. Excuse me. But we're going to be polite. We're going to say excuse me. And we're going to get attacked. Why was he doing the Blair Witch? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Look, there was something very interesting in that corner. He was deep in thought, and then uh, Alyssa just interrupted him. This this feels like a proportionate response right now. Very true. Um, but yeah, you have to talk to him in order to progress the story. Yeah, another interest mechanic. So we're gonna hit this lovely light here, and guess what's here, guys? The Holy Wrestling Chair of SmackDown. Oh yeah. I, it, it occurs to me, I should have kept count throughout this the number of times you have to do something counterintuitively stupid <laughs> to actually progress the game. Like, unlocking the door that you locked the small knife-wielding child in, talking to the murderer with the gigantic cleaver. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we've done that was remarkably silly. So we got another zombie. There were definitely a few other Oh bits. my god. <laughs> Oh no, I already so, know what's gonna happen again. <laughs> so we're gonna wait. We're gonna maneuver from this polite, polite zombie. All right, so we're just gonna go this way. Okay, thanks, bye. And we're gonna use the chair again. <laughs> what's on Maxwell's hair head? Um, I believe, I, I could be wrong. Uh, it's, I wanna say it's an Oni mask. Yeah, I, I, it's the Oni mask. Uh, yeah. I think it's a, a, a Hanya mask. Oh, yeah. Which is close enough. Uh. I would have to do some swift Googling to uh, remind myself of what a Hanya mask actually is, but I think it's to do with um, uh, no plays. Oh, yeah, pardon. You get the I key? can't remember. I'm going based on uh, there is a key by me. I'll be going back there in a second. I may have forgotten, but that's okay, because we got to get deal with the zombie. Gotcha. So guess what? Wrestling chair. Oh, God. All right, that's why you... <laughs> yeah, that, that, that chair just keeps popping back up. It, you know. I like how it's not only using a chair, but the same chair. Yep, yep. Well, I made this... It's, it's like the... It's like the holy broom of spicing. Why would you switch to another weapon? My when God, it's a Alyssa with a steel chair. But I always, I always enjoy saying this when it comes, and I've already used it. I mean, the chair got knocked down, but it got up again because nothing's going to keep it down. I'm sorry, guys. I always have to say that. <laughs> that zombie will never walk again. He just ended his whole career. Uh, well, I mean, he was just two hours away from retirement. So, I mean... I would like to point out that we actually have a pistol in our inventory at the moment, but Alyssa refuses to use guns, so we are running off several rooms to get a chair to smash the zombie with instead. Yep. A quick question. We have about 20 minutes left in this run or so. Uh, when's Alyssa going to uh, break someone through the announcing table? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, question Hopefully mark. Hopefully she's not. I'd quite like to continue commentating. <laughs> We're just going right. to have a... Uh... Yeah. So guess what, guys? We get introduced to a new character. The Gasp! It's Alyssa's dad. Yeah. Randomly. <laughs> the plot thickens. Alyssa's dad. And we, uh, we uh, unlocked him from his handcuffs. He's like, oh my goodness, we need to get you to a safe place. The Maxwell curse. Blah, blah. What's happening? That kind of shenanigans. So we got to go follow the dad. But we got to get this card key. Remember once again that the first person who actually mentioned the Maxwell curse to us was Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yep. Um, because <laughs> this provides a really stupid plot point later. As a matter of fact, almost everything about the plot in this chapter is really stupid, but... I mean, yeah, the that's, game... That's one that always sticks out to me. The game doesn't do the huge uh, plot dump till the very end of the game. All right. I mean, it could be worse. It could be Nightcry, where it doesn't do a huge plot dump at all. Why do we bring this, that game up? Why did you bring that up? <laughs> hey, that game was a great showing at GEQ, and that's why I didn't do it here, because it's already I, been done. I mean... I, I love... I love Nightcry. I love Father? it so much, but I can't help but poke fun at it. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I mean... I... Uh, just... 
It's the only oh. game I've ever seen a guy die to a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I played it, I I watched that and I laughed so hard I had to pause the game and then I had to restart the game and watch that scene again. My favorite oh. part about that was that was made by Hufumi Kono and not the people who made this one, but the, the people, the guy yes. who made the first two games. Uh, I just, it's, I want to like, I want to like I, Night Cry, but I mean, there's just so many things that just irk me so much about the game. I like Night Cry very much, and I, I have shown that on the GDQ stage. I'll say that much. I have That's shown I, that I like Night Cry. I, I love Night Cry, and I love Night Cry for what it is, but. Oh, come on. Night Cry is not a good game. I think I think my biggest beef with Night Cry was the multiple endings. And like, I backed that game when it was on Kickstarter and what they promised and what you got in the end. It, it kind of left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Um, I do, yeah, uh, that's fair. Okay. I mean, uh, at least we got that sexy saxophone music in the game. I mean, that is just, mm, that's fantastic cat jam right there. But everything else about it, I was just kind of like, I have two more things on Nightcry, and then you get back to Ghost Head really quick. One, okay. <laughs> um, that Saxon music's not on the official soundtrack. I ended up buying it for $20, and it's not on there. For shame! Apparently, it's just oh. generic saxophone track they found. Two, and this is my favorite Nightcry fact, uh, Nightcry to advertise Nightcry had a live-action movie where a child is playing Nightcry on an iPad. Oh yeah, because the game originally was supposed to be on like it was like on the iPad or some or like mobile devices before Correct. like Kickstarter or something. But the fun fact is the mobile device version never came out and was the original thing. Apparently, it's people said it was supposed to come out in 2021. Oh. Did we get the original mobile version? Uh, I can play Nightcry on my wow. phone. I mean Nightcry did come out on the PSP, which I highly recommend. Do not buy. Do not spend your money. I spend my money on that to find out the load screens. It? The load screens are terrible. Do not buy that. Oh. Like it broke my heart, but at the same time, I'm like, why? Okay. If if you're if you're going to play Nightcry, I would suggest playing it on the PC. Although even on the PC, it's oh, no, really no, 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 poorly optimized. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'm trying to aim here. Um. I think I oh there it is it's I hate to say this always I always like to say it, it's on the zombie's butt so let's shoot the zombie in the butt ah uh, <laughs> although speaking I, I think the last the last few times I've watched you do this it has been proportionally the zombie's butt where you've had to shoot for uh, most of these yes it's also been at the feet I rarely get um the headshots it's always been the feet or in the butt area uh the feet one sucks um, I will say that. It's just terrible. Um, anywho, we did the amulet. Note, note, note once again there that what we did was we picked up the amulet to uh, take us out of Bates State and put, bring us back to Alyssa, and then we put the amulet away again so that we can still go into Bates State in the future. Yeah, and um, kind of move the plot. that's a really good mechanic. Oh, yeah, totally good uh, mechanic. So Bates can only pick up this hatchet. Keep that in mind. Uh, and Bates... Bates can only use the hatchet on his body. Well, yeah, it's not, it's not a yeah. skilled chair. To get a key. I mean, you're not wrong, heck. <laughs> oh, I gotta pick up the amulet again. Sorry, sorry, guys. I gotta pick up that amulet again. So uh, we're adding corpse desecration to the list of things that uh, Bates has been involved in. Yes. I, I think... Or, sorry, carry on. Is desecration worse than making someone melt into the ground? <laughs> uh, are we forgetting about um, Are we forgetting about kicking a child cuz that's pretty high up there on the list? And stabbing a child. Kicking, kicking a child twice and then stabbing the child. Although in fairness, the child didn't seem to mind any of these. Well, the child like Stephanie was possessed by the evil statue, which you find out is the 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 parasite or yes. chemical disease. Blah blah. Ah, hey, Uncle Philip, guys. Just I'm gonna talk chilling. to him twice, and Uncle Philip's gonna be like, "I was actually evil all along," and we're, then he dies. We're we're, we're just hanging out in the graveyard in the research lab because I firmly believe that this pharmaceutical company was really hoping to get bought out by the Umbrella Corporation, <laughs> but uh, they had the wrong sort of zombies, unfortunately. I mean, I hate to bring it up it was like it's the third party, like um, Yellow Label, uh, Evil Lab Corp, kind of 
branding. I, I, I want to point out as well that one of the things that we didn't see in that cutscene there was uh, that was Uncle Phil, and Uncle Phil knew that the whole thing was this uh, parasite and all the rest of it, and yet it was Uncle Phil who tried to strangle us at the start of the game while ranting about the Maxwell curse. Yep. Speaking of the curse, oh, hey, there's that statue, guys. That must be the four out of, like, 45 limited edition golden statues in production and circulation. Just chilling. You bought it for $20 on a pre-order. But gasp. Actually, I think he got is gypped. This? this is... I've just realized this has got to be a painted wooden statue. It can't actually be made of gold because... We set it on fire in a fireplace, and I don't think it would melt if it was actually metal. Maybe it's a really hot fireplace. Or or maybe it has, like, uh, 100% guess... like fireproof shenanigans. Well, actually, now that I think about it, wouldn't throwing the oil on it just put fire around it but not actually melt it? Oh, Pickles, a zombie. Sorry. Ah, uh, zombie. Oh, my goodness, it's a zombie. We may be... We, we may be attempting to make more sense after this plot than the writers did at this point. I think so. Okay, quick question. Is anyone here watching a chemist? <laughs> we can have this answer to this question in chat. That's if very anyone true. watching is a certified chemist, we can learn if uh, this is indeed true on any of the stuff here. What What is the melting point of gold? And is that the sort of melting point you are likely to find in a domestic fireplace or a domestic oil fire? Okay, I gotta do something a little different. We're gonna die here. Um, what I'm supposed to do is get the first aid kit, but surprise, a random zombie was there. So I'm just gonna take the hit. We're just gonna die. I'll, I'll get my health back um, when I hit com continue. If the zombie That is pops a up. really useful... It is, a, it is a useful mechanic that the game will give you your health back when you die and just reset you to the point, but it doesn't really make up for the fact that uh, the bad endings are just the game killing you because you missed a flag uh, an hour before. Yeah, the unfortunate part, though, like, I'm back at orange health, but I have to become Bates at this point, so I'm going to be dropping back to the red, so I may be dying quite a bit from here on out. Um, That's all right. I believe in you. Okay. I think you've got this. <laughs> We're almost near the end. It's just... I just got, unfortunately... A bad roll of the dice, I, I guess. Good old RNG. The RNG. Gold smelts at 2,000 Fahrenheit. Uh, I... I'm... I'm, what, I'm what's a Celsius? European, <laughs> so I need to... I'm, I need to convert that. Uh, 2,000 F oh to C. Uh, that's 1,093 Celsius. Pfizer, you did forbidden maths. Why did you do forbidden maths? Wait, 1,093? It's only 70 more? I thought Celsius was, like, different math. I don't know. <laughs> I thought you said it was, I thought it was 2,000 yeah. Fahrenheit. You said 1,900... Yeah. Oh, 1,090, you said. Yeah. I think it's 1,900. No. Okay, okay. That's that's a wee bit... I was like, but well, that doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> I'm terrible with math, so my brain just kind of imploded there. Um, thank you, guys. The, 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 number, the number was higher than 10, so Pa has some difficulty with this. It's, I, it's okay. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. Math is not my strong point. I can draw, and I can do stuff on the computer, and I can, and can raise chickens, okay? <laughs> like, I got 10... You can hit zombies with steel chairs so hard that they melt. That's true. And bring up chicks. I got ba 10 baby chicks in a different room just chilling right now. So What if you I had 11? Uh... She may have 11. She just can't count that one. <laughs> she stopped at 10. Uh, I mean, I could go <laughs> further detail about this, but no. We originally were supposed to have like 15 eggs. We ended up at 10. But, you know, Mother Nature finds a way. Anywho. <laughs> Uh, so we're picking up the amulet. We're almost done. We gotta drop this, this amulet off again. We're almost, we're almost near the end, guys. Indeed, dinosaurs. Tiny, fluffy dinosaurs. They're super cute right now. Until they start learning to fly, and then I'm gonna be working, and then they're gonna fly and hit me in the head. Ah. <sighs> So, You've made some interesting life decisions lately, then. I We have. I mean, we moved into the middle of nowhere, and we decided to start raising chickens. So, I mean, yeah. Inc incidentally, if, if anyone listening is wondering why we're talking about chicks instead of uh, Clock Tower 2, The Struggle Within, slash Clock Tower Ghost Head, slash Clock Tower 2, the third one, 
Uh, it's because there really isn't much happening here except going back and forth through corridors to set things up. Yeah. Um, like, we are... So Shannon's real... dead. Yep. Oh, yeah, Shannon's dead. <laughs> that, that just that's happened. That, we're, we're almost near that, the end. That one character... The one character we saw sitting in a chair twice and then we skipped every cutscene involving her so we have absolutely no now, reason to care about this her zombie this room. here is the last zombie we will ever deal with in this entire game, in this entire speed run. Um, I'm going to bring this up because I saw the review ages ago and I had a good laugh. Uh, shout out to Nitrorad. He did a review on Clock Tower Ghost, or Circle Within and he showed this part of the zombie him making very angry noises and beelining it all the way to a fire extinguisher to like annihilate the zombie. I had a good laugh. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Anywho, let's cherish this final, final zombie kill. Um, I mean, hopefully I gotta find where I need to shoot. Is, is it the butt? Is it the foot? Ah, oh, there it is. All right. Now, I'm not done yet, because guess what, guys? We had to go pick up the amulet. Last time, we had to pick up the amulet. So, what did you guys learn from this fantastic, phenomenal, amazing, superb game? Learn to wrestle. <laughs> uh, fire extinguishers are multi-purpose tools that are very, very effective um, against zombies. Also, zombies melt when they die. Yep. Also, you can kick small children in the face and they're fine. I don't know if That's I should... probably not a good takeaway. I don't know if to, I should agree with that public or not. I'm just going to... Be quiet. <laughs> Look, it's 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 what Clock Towers taught me, but uh, I don't know if it's actually a good life lesson to apply. I would not recommend it. No, please don't. No, we don't recommend it. We do recommend getting fire extinguishers in your guys' house, houses for security purposes and them up to date. Yes. Yes. Ah. Okay, guys. Are you guys ready for the finale? We'll be watching it because I can't skip the cutscene. Um, but this... And because it's a massive info dump, which oh, yes. somehow explains the plot and makes it slightly more confusing. And there's so many twists and turns. Oh my goodness, guys. Brace yourselves. I think you're normally meant to layer the, t the twists throughout the game, but... Uh... Uh, uh, I mean, you gotta dump your plot somewhere. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good and one. When fighting you know zombies... No, I'm, I'm, I'm not making that joke. Um, but someone made a good point. When fighting zombies, wear a monkey costume. That is a really good point. Monkey. I would argue just wear a monkey costume in general. Huh. It's cozy. I mean, I do have a Snorlax onesie. Can that count? Anyway, ending. Plot dump. Here we go, guys. I envied you. Your brilliance. Your wealthy family. Everyone must die. Talking to you won't do any good. Sorry, how rude of me to forget. Since I was the one who made you crazy. Do you think he owned the mask and the Father. sword before he went, like, Melissa? Mad? Possibly. You are... I mean, there is a giant mask over on the wall, so probably. The also, the twist George here. Maxwell. We are actually George Maxwell's daughter. I was jealous of this man. So to <laughs> make him So yeah, fall, this is our dad. This guy. Pointing at him. Gonna boop his nose. From the boop. Grave. What are you talking about? Father, I, d I don't understand. You were yeah, in fact, she wasn't a very Maxwell good dad. Fate. Speaking the of the monkey suit, look at her face. We haven't really seen her face with the monkey suit. Born into the Maxwell family every a few blushes. generations. Yeah. So this is this is kind of another tie into Everyone Clock Tower again, in in that you know you've got the birth of cursed children, um, but yeah, again it's kind of a stretch. Also, so, shout out to the panic event that's just him shooting the gun, but not you doing anything. Yeah. So in this cutscene, you actually have to pay attention. There's two uh, quick uh, panic pan uh, QTEs. Anymore. You have to hit X to win. So I. <laughs> Does that mean that we're, we're not actually playing as Alyssa during those panic events? The statue with bacteria. I don't know who we're playing, so we're not playing as uh, the dad. We're playing Father. the mouse cursor. Goodbye, yeah, I guess it makes more sense than anything else that the game is throwing at us at this point. Going to blow up. Also, why did he blow up his own lab? 
because I it, don't know because he has explosions and I mean explosions cannot be avoided must die explosions oh. can't be avoided they can only be so that's dealt not... with by walking away without looking at them so that happens oh. once in a while uh it's just because I didn't hit X enough I think I don't know it could be my health but we get to go through the entire cutscene again You're so how do you uh, miss the plot dump? You get it again. Well, yeah, there we go. I, I, same time I apologize, guys. That Everyone happens once in a while. Die. Um, so kind of a mechanic of the game is if your cursor is red, it takes more clicks to pass that. And it's actually really difficult. A lot of people tend to fail that one. It's not, it's not easy. If it's orange, it's pretty easy. But if it's red, it can be pretty difficult. It's doable, but not easy. Yeah. I can get it once in a while. Still underestimate. Am I? Oh, okay. That's good to know. <laughs> Unless this cutscene takes five minutes, you, yep, you're still addressing it. I mean, we definitely won't go through the credits, although I can't skip the credits. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll watch the final cutscene. Um, but also, since we... while, I'm, uh, while I'm on it really quick, I just love the idea that panic events in this game are your, uh, your dad shooting uh, a samurai and you telling the samurai that he's not your dad, but in the original Clock Tower, it's panicking to get up a hill and actually struggling with things. And not Curse struggling to get the words to say you're not my father out of your mouth. Yep. This is this is more of a, a meta struggle event. It's an emotional it's, it's struggle. The, it's it is the literal struggle within. Everyone there it is. I want to make that pun. Die. See now this, it's the other way around. <laughs> okay, this first one. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say since we've already seen this. Um, yeah, I totally forgot. Oh, um, really quick when you... question for you though. Hmm. Uh, do you have any shout-outs you want to give to anyone since we are near the end of this? I, I do have, I actually have a little shout-out thing. Um, so, shout-out to Batake. We brought him up quite a bit, but I'd like to thank him quite a bit for going to speedrunning Clock Tower 2, kind of optimizing that route further. I always appreciate when new people come in to optimize routes and change things up. I always appreciate that. Um, you for joining me in this lovely commentary. You, as Agdysis as well for joining me on this commentary and ho like having this Wait, fantastic Father. marathon. Oh, I got hit X. Everyone Give me a second, guys. Must die. There You're we go. You're not my father. Gasp. Lie down. <clears throat> Success. Indeed. <laughs> and I mean. The other shout out I guess I can give, um, cause my very first speed run I ever did, um, was not this game, but Clock Tower for PlayStation. Oh, and time, sorry. Um, was, uh, Clock Tower 2 or Clock Tower PlayStation. Long ass time ago. Part of my language. Um, shout out to Carcinogen, cause I was in a stream when he was speed running that, and that's the speed run, my first speed run I picked, so. Thank him for getting me into speed running, because I, I watched that Clock Tower speed run. And your tacos! <laughs> I'll watch the ending here, but a really quick pop. People uh, did want to check you out on Twitch. Uh, if they enjoyed the run, where could they find you? You can find me in my spectacular, amazing, phenomenal channel, twitch.tv slash pa underscore sama. I play some really uh, fun, obscure, this. amazing games and speedrun. No, obscure, doing. amazing, fantastic speedruns of Wade. interesting games. Think the curse is real? <laughs> It's it's pure absurdity. Right, and I'll watch the ending a little bit here. Yeah, a a ghost head. It, it's a clock tower game. I mean, it it's just has the theoretically name. Theoretically, a clock tower game. <laughs> it has the. By the way, for some reason, it's a clock tower game, but this one doesn't have a clock tower in it. Uh, it has a clock tower. This gets all cheesy. It has a clock tower in our hearts, guys. No. <laughs> oh, oh, this cutscene. It's hard, isn't it? Everyone's dead, and it's all my fault. Maybe so. It would have been better if I had died. I'm not going to die. It's not that you've died there once already, you know. Well, I guess I've got to get rid of those zombies. Okay, bye. It's not going to be easy. Oh, this cutscene. <laughs> I I really hope that that cutscene makes more sense in Japanese. I I hope. So we got ending A. The credits are going to roll. I can't skip it. We got ending A. So what do you get when you beat ending A? You unlock score attack and time attack mode. That's it. 
Those, those were weird unlocks. Um, as Faizu mentioned, how, um, the only how does oh, core attack work? Uh, basically, you're in the hospital and you shoot zombies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. It's it's Resident Evil mercenaries mode. Kinda, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, so as Faizu mentioned, um, you if you get all the endings, you unlock the character bios, and that will tell you everything that happens in the game. The plot, the characters, what happens to them, everything. Like why Shannon wants to revenge, blah, blah, blah. Everything. It's just, that's where they put the plot. Get all the endings, unlock that. Yeah. <laughs> all huh. right. But yeah, um, this is just going to show credits. The credits go for a while. Um, so, I mean, we can definitely kind of roll on over to Clock Tower 3 if you guys want to do that. Yeah, we'll get on ready for that. I do want to say thank you both for being here. Thank you, Pa, for the run. Uh, for all of you who have been enjoying this so far, this has been uh, Clock Tower 2, The Struggle Within. Do you guys have anything else you want to say before you head on off? Um, the only thing I could say is since we're all talking about PSAs of fire extinguishers, when the stream is starting up for Clock Tower 3, do stay, do watch it, but take the time to stretch, go get some water, and maybe some popcorn, because, man, it's going to be a good speedrun. Yeah, the next game is going to uh, probably one of, uh, I think, my favorite of the four speedrun-wise. Um, actually, no, my second favorite. Second favorite of the four. My favorite's SNES, but we'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, up next is going to be Clock Tower 3, so don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick wellness break, so do indeed stand up, stretch your legs. Uh, we're going to be right back really quick. As well, uh, if you'd like to support GDQ during the interim of events, uh, feel free to uh, shoot us a sub here. It is appreciated, and it does support uh, GDQ during that break time. Thank you very much, and we'll be right back. Thank you again, Pa and Faisu. All right, we are back once again. So, Ghost Head, huh? What a, what a game. Uh, it truly was the struggle within, if you uh, think about it. That was kind of forced, but don't worry. We have a game coming up that's a lot more magical than Ghost Head, I think. I think we're gonna kind of go into that uh, that magical vibe when you think about it, and you'll see what we mean very quickly. And now we're going to the final Clock Tower game ever released back in 2003. This one's kind of weird because this is when Capcom took over. Anyway, here's Clock Tower 3, which is gonna be a very different style of game, but it's still a Clock Tower game, and it actually has a Clock Tower in it. So, uh, Demonic, feel free to take it away. All right. Hey there, everyone. My name is Demonic Robots. Welcome to Clock Tower 3. I'm joined on the couch with me, uh, Carcinogen. He's going to be helping out. So this is going to be very, very different um, than the other Clock Tower games. And I feel like I probably said that at Ghost Head, but it keeps on happening. Um, basically, you got to see it as like, you know, you have the Godfather trilogy. The first two movies, amazing. The third one, not so much. It's kind of like that with Clock Tower 3, or with, with Clock Tower series, you know. One, two, and Ghost Head, it follows that. This is like if they made Godfather 4, but they set it in space and they made it into a sitcom. It's an unbelievably different game than the rest of them. Um, just to give you guys a quick heads up, uh, to make sure that nothing is going to be confusing. Actually, I'll, I'll get into the game here in just a moment, so if we want to get yep. ready on time. Yep. All right. Three, two, one, go. So we are going to be playing as Alyssa Hamilton, not the same Alyssa from Ghost Head, who's going to be fighting against uh, the Burroughs, who is all, also not the same family from the other games. I don't know why they made that confusing, but you're just going to have to deal with it. So this is Alyssa, but not the Alyssa from the original game or from the uh, ghost head. So we are playing as a 14-year-old Alyssa who is returning home from boarding school. Um, essentially, she got a strange letter from her mom saying, don't come home, please, you're gonna be in danger. So the very first thing she does is go, oh, I should go home. And um, here we are. <laughs> so, um, Carsey, would you like to explain the panic meter? Uh, Yeah, the panic meter. So uh, in the top left of the screen, um, Panic, your 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 health is essentially a uh, a panic meter instead. So the closer you are to enemies, um, I don't know if like the uh, the panic meter itself like just like slowly increments when you're like closer to enemies. I don't think it does. But uh, if an enemy attacks, basically Alyssa has like two hitboxes. One is like one is like Alyssa herself, and the other is like kind of a kind of a kind of a range around Alyssa. And if an enemy attacks Alyssa, then her panic gauge increases, and when it reaches max, then she goes into full panic mode, and if she takes a hit during full panic mode, then she dies. 
Yeah, so it's a little bit different than an actual health system. It's kind of similar to what they had in the original games. Um, whenever you saw, like, the mouse cursor in those games, like, flash blue and red. Um, only it's a little bit more uh, descended. So, you're probably wondering, what did we just do there? Well, we have a magical water bottle. This water bottle is filled with holy water. It allows us to do a few things. It allows us to break sigils like that on doors and it also allows us to stun enemies um, and we can use it to activate portals yes there are portals in this game um, also speaking of portals and teleporting we're, we're we were in like you know early 2000s at the time in a nice mansion in england um, this is going to be a little bit of a different setting so now that we are out of our mansion home we are now in 1940s london during uh the world war or, i'm sorry 1940s london during the world war ii bombings so we just magically transferred here i i don't have any words to explain that <laughs> it's a clock tower game yeah, that, that's that's about the closest to an answer you're going to get. Um, same reason as to why we are dealing with a ghost here in the moment. Um, we have to find her ring. She needs her ring back with her body. So this is a mechanic in the game that you can use for both optional and mandatory items. You can um, essentially return items of significant value to corpses, and it'll cleanse their spirits and allow them to move on. Um, you can use this to get key items to continue on with the game, and you can use it to get uh, optional items like this one right here. This is a mandatory one, but it drops an optional item. So we can pick that up right here, and that's going to be a sigil stone. So essentially what the sigil stone allows us to do is hopefully we don't need it, but essentially if I go into panic and take a hit, it will stop me from dying. You're also going to see me refill my water every once in a while. Those are also save points that we're not going to be using. And um, yeah, so we can do a lot with this water bottle and it also has a kind of a weird range um, slash lock on features. So you're gonna see me like th splash water in very specific spots to open sigils or get past enemies and things like that. Sometimes the water bottle even clips through walls like you're about mm -hmm. to see in a sec. Yeah, it, it's, it's a magical water bottle in, in many ways. Um, going through walls is surprisingly not the weirdest effect they have. Also, let's hope this ghost is good RNG. Yeah, sometimes the ghost will grab you. Um, they grab and stun you, give you a little bit of panic, but they're not really the main enemies. They're kind of just more of something that's a little annoying. But um, here we go. We're going to be heading into Norton's Tailor. Um, first example of going through walls right here. Going to use that to splash open the door. Um, when it comes to enemies, Alyssa tends to have an auto-aim feature. So if I'm running and there's an enemy behind me and I press the magical water button, then it will automatically turn her around and splash them. I don't need to manually turn around and uh, press the button to do so, which is nice. However, when it comes to uh, these sigils right here, they are manual. Another weird feature of the holy water is when you throw it at an angle with the camera, it, I believe, has a higher range. I'm not entirely too sure. So well, pretty much uh, from what I've learned is the PSA from this game, since we got one from every game so far, is stay hydrated. Yes. Another PSA is don't play this game. It's really bad. <laughs> no. That's, yeah, this, fair. That's a fair PSA. This is actually a, a pretty decent game. I, I would say if you are interested in survival horror games from this era, this game is a really good game to start. Um, it's very simple, but you can definitely uh, get really good at it. So we're gonna come down here over to this drawer. We're gonna activate a cutscene, and we're gonna be introduced to our very first stalker. So if you saw X Run at Haunting Ground, they are very similar to the stalkers in those games. Um, like Harcy said, the main thing that we want to do around them is control our panic. Want to make sure that they are not um, bringing that up and sending us into panic mode because that is very bad. Because not only does it make us vulnerable, it also uh, makes Alyssa significantly harder to control. So this is our first stalker. His name is Sledgehammer. He's a. Uh, they they definitely were like oh whoops there we go. They definitely made the names very obvious. His name's Sledgehammer, so he uses a sledgehammer. Sure, his name isn't Gallagher instead. <laughs> I I don't think it is. 
here we go unfortunately we have to skip the cutscene so again this game it also uses chairs to defeat enemies who probably shouldn't be defeated by chairs um fun fact the cutscene that we're skipping uh Alyssa football tackles him to knock him out um you'll learn that Alyssa is just as much of a superhero as the other Alyssa from Ghost Head which again this isn't the same character I know both of them are our schoolgirls. both of them are named Alyssa both of them use chairs to defeat enemies these are different characters entirely I promise so we just got some lavender water right there. Um, the lavender water is used to quell Alyssa's panic. Um, I guess she, you know, sprays it around the room or something and it makes her uh, calm down. Um, we really don't use the items for anywhere except for one very specific area that we'll get to later on. That is definitely the hardest part of the game outside of some of the boss fights. So we're gonna take a quick refill here. So the reason we went to Norton's Taylor is because we needed an invitation to get into this concert hall. Also, he can just magically teleport. Again, I don't know why he doesn't like just teleport in front of her and and catch her like that. Who knows? But we're heading into the concert hall. Um, so essentially we're playing as like a magical like ghost person where medium, I guess. Where we're trying to quell some spirits. And we needed to get an invitation, because Alyssa's not cool enough to come in here without an invitation. But um, this is going to be where we're going to be May. She is the ghost of a, a little girl that was killed by Sledgehammer a while back. And we need to reunite her with a special item. And whenever you reunite um, significant ghosts with special items, it gives Alyssa's magical powers. Um, so Sledgehammer is kind of random here, but the good thing about this is camera angles are your best friend and a very big weakness to these enemies. So he can't follow us the back here because the camera angle doesn't allow him to basically. So he's just gonna be, you know, chilling out in the main hall. Very, very important to raise that lever back up, by the way. Because yes. if you forget if you forget to raise the lever back up, then that platform is still going to be down when you have to visit like the upper section of uh, of the stage. So you'll have to run all the way back to re-raise this lever. Yeah. Um, another thing to note is that the code for this upcoming um, box is the same every time. It doesn't change. However, Alyssa will not be able to use it unless you have the note that tells you the combination. So that's kind of a common little thing. Even though we know the answer to this box is 103, um, until we pick up the memo that shows what the answer is, then we can't actually uh, open it up. And that's kind of the same in a couple of other areas as well. But here we go, we're gonna grab the master key that's going to allow us to access the rest of this area. Um, the Sledgehammer's AI is kind of random here and he has some very varying and different patterns. So you kind of just have to play the game a lot to know kind of what exactly patterns he does. Um, another quick thing to note is when you're in that camera right there where you're switching and going through doorways, um, you are actually invulnerable, weirdly enough. Um, enemies will not be able to chase you there. It won't lower your panic, but it will allow you to not get hit. Um, also, we have some uh, quick little movement here. We don't want to get panicked by him right there, so we're just going to take some side angle to avoid it. Um, this is another example of how broken camera angles are. So we need to unlock the sigil. However, we can't unlock the door fast enough until, because, you know, we have sledgehammer on us. So we just open the locker. There we go. Hope y'all are doing well. Just kind of chilling right here. And then we can grab the door right here and we're good to go. Does your panic actually go down when you open the locker there? Like I thought I saw it go going down a little bit. It might a little bit. I'm not too sure actually. You're definitely invulnerable, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was like something that you could do it with. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe it was. Maybe there's an oversight there. What with the, um, what with the, uh, the no, the, the the no panic going down like during the invulnerability camera angles like rule. So I don't know. It might be one yeah. of the rare exceptions. Probably probably look into that. I think the game just like definitely doesn't want you to get hit like off screen or something like that so that's why you don't get attacked or maybe the animations would have been weird or something i'm not too sure but here we go we're going to get flanked by uh sledgehammer again we're going to allow him to move forward because if we splash him immediately he'll kind of get stuck right here and we won't be able to crawl under this which would be bad there we go and then he kind of just runs into there um he doesn't really figure out how to leap over the 
uh, debris until here. And by then, we're already long gone. So it's important to note that this is not a point and click game. Uh, this was the first kind of real jump into 3D controls. So it's like a, a Silent Hill game where um, it's not tank controls, it's alternate. So if I spin the analog stick, she turns around in a circle. It makes it much easier to navigate. So was a quick question right now. Demonic, how did you get into speedrunning Clock Tower 3? Um, I, you know, I watched this big kind of small streamer. You guys might not have heard of him named Dices. Um, I, I saw him running. Him, yeah, he's, he's kind of a cool guy, I guess. Um, also, really quick, if he stops right there, then that's good RNG because then we don't have to splash him. Um, so nice little RNG right there. But essentially, I saw Dices do this, and I remember Clock Tower from like as a kid playing like the PS1 version of the game. Um, and I was like, hey, you know, that game kind of looks not as fun to do as a speed run, but Clock Tower 3 looks really neat. And then uh, I picked this game up and, and played a lot of it. All right. Also so, really quick, uh, just Ecdysis. Yeah, Ecdysis, sorry. Yeah. Um, so right now we have this gigantic plank to walk over and Alyssa stumbling right there is completely random. Apparently one of the runners told me that it's actually based on your PS2's internal clock time and then when you arrive here. So it, theoretically, if you could get here at the same exact time every time for the same frame and you set your clock before it, then you can like get a one stumble, which would be best RNG. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding you. One of the runners, Soupy, was uh, the one that told me that was based off of that. So it, it's kind of the same thing with Silent Hill 2, only way later into the game and probably not worth setting up every single time. But here we go. We just need to squeeze past a sledgehammer one more time, and then we should be free, so... Hopefully we don't get any jokes here. Also, those butterflies are not very good. I remember the first time playing this casually, I thought they would like help us or something. Like, they're pretty like purple butterflies, but no, they will stun you and allow the killers to catch up, which is bad. So, you're probably wondering, is there any combat in this game? Because right now we really haven't seen a whole lot. And normally in Clock Tower games, they're kind of known for not having combat. That's that's their main gimmick uh, since the very first one. But let me tell you, this one does have combat. It's, um, it's something. <laughs> I won't spoil it just yet. Would you say it's magical? I would say it's very magical. And it's definitely gonna be something that you probably haven't seen in many other horror games before. So again, he's going to continue chasing us. We're running all the way back to Dorn's Taylor. The only reason that we went uh, to the concert hall was to find a pair of pliers. I don't know why she didn't like just search through like a toolbox or, or something like that to get them. No, she needed to go all the way to the concert hall to grab these things. And it's, it's kind of funny because you'll find all that like Alyssa does a lot of very convoluted things to gain access to um, like just kind of mundane items that like you could probably find in a much easier way. All right, so we're gonna be picking up something in this room. We're gonna be picking up two important things. The first thing is gonna be May's father's pocket watch. And that's gonna be her special item that allows her to move on. And um, if you haven't seen the cutscenes for these, this game, we're gonna be skipping a lot of them. I would recommend like watching a, a video that just shows all the great cutscenes. Um, Cause fun fact, they were actually directed by the same person who did the Battle Royale movie. Um, so they're very wild and it was kind of also early in the days of Bo Camp where they were like, just like, let's see what we can do with this. <laughs> We also picked up a green arrow. That is a repellent arrow. And those are gonna be very important later on. Also getting a bunch of uh, lore stuff. Essentially, we just need to take the pocket watch back to the concert hall. Um, this game likes to run you back and forth a lot. That's uh, another very common thing. So 
So, uh, just a random question, Demonic. Uh, what's your, uh, what's your favorite anime to watch? What's my favorite anime? Oh, there's a, you know, there's a few of them, but I really like this one called Sailor Moon. I'm not sure if anyone's ever heard of it. Oh, uh, yeah, back in the 90s, it was a good time. You had uh, all the Sailor Moon, uh, uh, the aesthetics and all that. Yeah, that was, like, definitely my favorite part. You know, it was really just kind of nice watching, like, you know, just a fun, happy anime with just a bunch of magical schoolgirls doing magical schoolgirls things. You know, it's, it's kind of different from this game, though. Like, you know, you think I would be, like, into something more dark and gritty like this game. But, um, yeah. Um, so now we have a boss fight. That's going to be a thing. And um, we actually have something pretty cool. So you're probably wondering how do we fight and do we have to, like, you know have him swing at like a chandelier wire and have it fall on him or something like that no we we, we got something a, a little bit different Our water bottle just turned into a magical bow and arrow. <laughs> That's just the way this game goes. Yes. So essentially what we need to do is we need to use our magical bow and arrow to bind Sledgehammer. Um, the thing is we have to charge it up to enough uh, shots and then it'll create that little bind right there. And we need to bind him several times in order to do so. Um, the quick thing to note is I cannot move the bow. It'll automatically aim at the enemy and it will stay locked at that angle um, until you fire it. We all know aiming wasn't invented until after 2003. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the worst thing that an enemy can do, they can't, it's not them like attacking you, it's them walking left or right. Also, this is how we defeat uh, our, our uh, chasers. Spirit ball. <laughs> and then he just dies. Then, yeah, he's dead. He is very dead. Um, and you're probably wondering, what happens to his body um, after he dies? Well, he turns into a piece of jewelry. The Clover of Love. So now we have defeated the subordinate. Um, and now we can reunite Mei with her father. Again, we're not going to show the cutscenes. I wish we could, but we don't have time. But they are absolutely fantastic in every single one of them. If you liked that magical girl transformation just as much as I think you did, then go look at the cutscenes for this game because they're all just as good. Yeah, no, the cutscenes the cut in this game have some absolutely amazing mocap, by the way. Like, mm -hmm. this cutscene that, this cutscene that, that he just skipped here is some of the, some of the, some of the, some of the absolute funniest, most unnatural movement for, like, the, for, 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 for like, for, like, the dialogue exchange that is happening that I've just mm -hmm. ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, very kind of the Japanese style of like vivid and wild expressions with their movement and a lot of that stuff. Very much overacting everything. It's it's amazing. But very, uh, we, uh Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say we um also are going to be meeting Dennis. Um he's not really a love interest. He's kind of like that that uh kind of silly childhood friend that she grew up with and now has reunited now that she's back home. Um, we also get the key to our grandfather's uh, office. And Alyssa really, really loves her grandfather. Grew up with him, thinks he's a great guy. And he went missing a couple of years ago, so they don't know where he is. But his office was locked up that entire time. And Dennis just had the key randomly. So now we are going to be heading off to the next area. Also, again, we teleported back. Um... In case, uh, sorry I glossed over that. There's just so much teleportation in this game that it can be it can be a little bit hard to keep track of everything. 
I also like how everyone has their name on their door, like, you know, like, yeah, when, like, you were a kid, where it was, like, you had this sign on the thing that said your room, but, like, even the mom has it on hers. No girls allowed. Stay out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and we'll see Dennis a little bit later on, because he shows up outside of cutscenes, which is for some weird reason, but, um, he's, he's basically just kind of Ron Weasley. That's, that's probably the best way to describe him. No, he looks he looks exactly like Ron Weasley. I'm I'm actually amazed that I'm actually amazed that there that there weren't any like lawsuits flying around. But then again, oh, that's like sure. about the time that's about the time the first Harry Potter movie came out though, wasn't it? I think, I'm not too sure. Yeah, it could have been just a coincidence. Also, um there's a portal. So you can use the holy water, the the magical water on the drawing on the ground to activate it and teleport us to the 1960s and that we're 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 going up a couple decades than from before. So this area is pretty calm. We're not going to be getting into our stalker just yet. Um, we're powering that up because we get an automatic refill of the waters later on. The waters will refill for two reasons. Either you manually refill them at one of the save stations or whenever you level up your water so you get another charge in them, it'll refill your water for that as well. Um, you also get it in one single cutscene where in the cutscene she re refills the water. So it's kind of nice that they refill it up because of that. But uh, here we go. We're in what's called the cutscene hallway where we are basically going to be skipping like five cutscenes in a row in this tiny little area. But um, essentially what's happening here is we are meeting a blind man and a blind woman who are searching for each other. And we need to find an item of significant value for these ghosts in order to reunite their spirits. Yeah. This is also while trying to find our missing mother, by the way. I don't know what this has to do exactly with finding our missing mom, but I'm sure it'll all connect at the end of the day. But yeah, just want everyone to keep in mind who's been watching the entire event. Like, this is still a clock tower game. It, it, it says it on the box. I promise. <laughs> Even if it's a, a little bit different from the rest. So we can head down here. So right now we are um, trying to get access to the kitchen. And um, we just need to grab this key right here. And if you remember what I was talking about earlier with ghosts and... Oh, that's one of the first times I got grabbed there. That's fine. Good thing about this area is we don't really have to worry about our panic too much. Because by the time we actually get back to the stalker where it would matter, um, we, like, the bar has already gone down. All that was needed. So, we have found the body of a photographer. And everyone knows that you are completely tied to your job and you can have no other interests or values. So, this person's significant item that they missed so much, so dearly, that they need to move on is film. Because he's a photographer, guys. He died with his camera. That's, that's the only thing that could uh, allow him to move on. He just needs his film to take photos. So this is the cutscene that I was talking about earlier, which will refill our water for us, so we don't need to do it. And it's also a good example of Alyssa's extendo arms, where she can pick things up from way further away than she should be able to. Um, this isn't the most significant one, but this is a pretty big one. So we just picked up that sparkling item all the way over there in the uh, on the side. And now we can teleport back to the Hamilton Mansion. Also, uh, like X said, uh, the worse the Clock Tower game is, the better the music is. And I would say the soundtrack is a mixed bag, which is pretty much how I feel about the actual game itself. Um, it has some really good tracks, it has some really, really bad tracks, and that's kind of the same with the gameplay and the story. Some really, really good moments, some really not so good ones. So now we are heading back all the way. Um, also, for some reason, the mansion is quite spooky now. Get a little bit of a lighting change and everything. Dennis is gone. I also love how just casual Alyssa is about all of this. She kind of just goes through everything, just going, ah, this is fine, this is fun. All right, let me use the key here.
get some uh, more lore. So the book ba is basically talks about entities, which are evil beings that are trying to become immortal um, and have power over subordinates who are the chasers that we um, encounter. So Sledgehammer was a subordinate, not an entity, uh, to make that clear. It also talks about people called Rooters, which are women of power who... I think before like their 19th birthday, they gain magical p powers to fight evil. Again, this is a clock tower game. Just want to bring that up. Uh, I think it's the 15th. Yeah, I, I think if they get their powers like maxed out at 15, but it starts to wane around 19, I think. Yeah. Something something like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 rooter magic. Just remember that. And it's also important to know. So weird. <laughs> yeah. And it's also important to know that Alyssa is 14 here. However, her birthday is coming up very shortly. Uh, so her 15th birthday is supposed to be when uh, Rooters, or, or the magical girls from the Hamilton bloodline, um, essentially get their powers maxed out. So keep that in mind for later on. Because uh, it's a very important plot detail. So now that we have the film, you know, the film from the a modern camera probably in the early 2000s is definitely going to work for a ghost in the 1960s. But yeah. <sighs> so a big thing about this is also going to be very good movement. Um, that's a very important thing, especially when you're getting chased in order to not get hit. Um, our panic routing is very, very tight. We make sh like, there's some areas you're going to see us where the bar is 99% filled and we just barely squeak by. And a lot of the routing is very intentional in that part. Um, this upcoming chaser is probably the most random in terms of these actual chases. And it's mostly because of one very specific area. Also, a very annoying thing is we timed this by RTA. However, the game actually has a pretty good in-game timer. The problem is it doesn't tell us our final time. The only time we can check it is at the menu because when you save at the end of the game, it wipes the counter back to zero for a clear mode playthrough, which is really annoying because it could totally be like a really good valid timer we could use if it just, you know, showed us at the end. It's very infuriating to say the least mm -hmm. yeah especially because um capcom historically makes pretty good in-game timers um but this one unfortunately just not the case but here we go um Ek, uh what's your what's your favorite cutscene in this game would you say uh that's it's coming up yeah, I, th I think we have time for a little bit of a break to check this out It's a very sentimental one. I have to tell you that dinner's mm -hmm. ready. And I told you that you don't need to be worried about me. Your old mother may have dicky eyes, but she's not on her last legs yet. Oh, what a, what a, what a sweet you mom and son bonding mind. moment. Anyway, what is it you're making this time? I want to mention that this guy is so nice. He makes, he makes toys Actually, for kids. This. And he knits his mom a shawl. How sweet. Oh, but this is so wholesome. Winter's coming, and I don't want you catching cold, wandering around outside. I've been making this in my spare time. How is it? Warm enough? Aww. How so nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's enough play, happy family. You make me sick. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I sort of mentioned that uh, the last game had beating up children, and this game has beating up old women. I think we were finding some kind of uh, pattern here. God, he's going ham on those toys. <laughs> I don't know why he's going to attack the toys. Like, you know, I, I think you could have done something a little different. It's crushing their spine and their spirit. <laughs> also, so he loves his job. He really does. He is a man who is never going to have to work a day in his life. 
I want to mention, by the way, that I take this type of inspiration for every speedrun in the trip I show you, everyone. This is the inspiration I'm going in with right here. This enjoyment. So even though he uh, he likes doing acid baths, he's uh, he doesn't really like bathing that much. So we're gonna be throwing a little bit of water on him, and he's just gonna spontaneously combust in the flames. Ah! Hot, hot, hot! Ah! So Corroder is probably the worst uh, chaser in the entire game, uh, both in the boss fight and actually chasing us. He definitely um, has killed more runs than any other character in this entire game for me. No demonic. Yes. Would you say that this is a hot speed run? I would say this is a very hot speed run. Um, also, uh, if you remember chairs, I got a one up for you, and I got a little surprise. I'm not sure if Ek has seen this one before, or if he's seen it like recently. So we have an evade point here. Evade point like the chairs in Ghost Head. <laughs> just just <laughs> flattens him against the door like a cartoon. <laughs> Oh, he gets flattened. <laughs> oh, I love that. Awesome. Happy I didn't get booed for that pun. Normally I get booed. <laughs> it was a pretty good pun. Also, another example of being able to throw things through walls. We're able to hit him with the water to get through this corner. There we go. So we're going to be coming back up here to grab a uh, Allen wrench or... I'm not sure. No, that's not an Allen wrench, is it? I don't think so. It's, a, it's just hexagonal wrench. Just, I don't know. Gotcha. I'm not a very big tool guy. Uh, also, you can actually uh, walk through the enemies while they're entering into rooms like that, so we can just use that to squeeze by pretty easily. So this line coming up right here is like the most annoying in the entire game. Um, I'm going to take a safety water where I'm going to grab this right here to refill it. Um, enemies spawn in when you activate certain camera angles, so you should spawn in there now. <laughs> and let's see if I can squeeze through. Ooh, look at that. Good RNG. Nice. nice. So sometimes he will do a butt stomp, and that's bad. We don't like the butt stomps. And uh, thankfully, though, he's actually pretty friendly. He saw that we were doing a marathon. He's like, all right, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a break. Go. We're gonna turn around. So essentially right now what we're doing is we're trying to get into the shawl because if we get the shawl Then we can gain our magical bow and arrow power and we can also reunite it with the I've ghost <laughs> of the uh, old lady and her son and then use that to defeat the uh, Corroder here and return home Again still trying to find our mom by the way also, we have a ghost right here. That's actually good RNG. Um, sometimes ghosts will be right in your way, and because of the camera angle, you won't really be able to see them. So thankfully, the ghost is right there. And usually, if you can see the ghost, you can get around them pretty easily. He's feeling hot, hot, hot. <laughs> I mean, this game definitely has some uh, some very awkward moments, like the one from uh, Michael Scott doing that song. <laughs> Again, watch the cutscenes. If, if you have like, there, there's only like an hour of them. They're all like pure comedic gold. I mean, I can't think of like something that I would rather do on a Saturday night than watch those on repeat. Also, Carsey, since he is hot, 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 would you say he's hot blooded? He's hot blooded. <laughs> Uh, all right. So again, we have another thing where the um, the subordinates can teleport. So he just jumps out of the water from nowhere. I don't know why. I don't know why they don't use that to their advantage to, you know, capture Alyssa. I feel like that would be the smart thing to do, but I don't know. I don't have teleportation powers. I don't know the rules about them. So we'll just pretend like it's a totally normal thing. But here we go. We are now into the second boss fight of the game and the most random one. Um, for most of the other ones, we have somewhat of a strategy for them. Um, this one is just shoot him until he's dead as best as you can. <laughs> and there's not really much else we can do about it. It's completely random. We have tried so hard to make this fight even semi-consistent and you, you just can't. It's impossible. 
Um, this is also where we're going to be introduced to a new mechanic that the bosses have, where they can walk left and right, and that is the worst possible thing that they can do, like that. As you mentioned earlier, aiming wasn't invented until after 2003, so exactly. you can't actually aim, you're walking wherever you aim. Yep. And it's important to note to it actually interrupt his abilities. The only I have to have three charges on my arrow, and I need six charges to actually bind him. So we need him to tell us to prepare to die. That's actually good because that gives us enough time to charge up another arrow. Oh no, he moved right. Okay, this is fine. Him moving uh, left and right. Would you say he's playing head games with you? Oh god. He definitely is right now. Thank you. Uh, prepare to die is actually consistent. Like, you can actually get him to do prepare to die if you just, like, interrupt his actions, like, twice. Oh, and he yeah, just, like, I'm does good. prepare to die. Yeah. There she is. That's about the only consistent thing that I've found about him. Yeah. I've had, like, fights where, um, so clear mode is essentially the hard mode of this game where it makes the enemies a lot harder. My gold for my clear mode is much faster than my normal mode gold. This fight is just that random and that much of a variable. I would say there's probably like 30 to 40 seconds of variable you can get um, on this fight. Prepare to die. Surprisingly, he's not being too terrible, though. Other than walking right a few times. There she is. Yeah, it was actually a pretty solid fight this time around. Like, the reason, like the reason why this, this fight falls flat so much is just because of the, the the shape of the arena really because it's just way too open there's like no there's like no places to like get him uh to like just like funnel him into and like get him to get him to not move yeah exactly also he turns into a piece of jewelry as well um so that's kind of a side plot Alyssa has a necklace that is missing pieces and the more bosses we kill the more pieces we get also, you're pr probably wondering because Clock Tower is very well known for its iconic character, Scissor Man. And I got good news for you if you're upset about him not showing up in Ghost Head. He there is a Scissor Man in this game. That is all I'm going to say. <laughs> but um, there we go. We, we do the nice thing of returning the shawl back to the, the sweet old lady, reunite her with her son, fix their blindness, and, and help them pass on. Oh yeah, awesome. I was uh, I was mentioned in chat really quick, but uh, hard mo uh, there's a hard mode to this game, and the fun part is they actually get different costumes, and Corroder gets like a can of bug spray, and it's hilarious. Yeah, the, all the enemies get like different weapons, like Sledgehammer gets like a maul with spikes on it. Very quite fun. It's a can of but, bug spray. Was this, yeah. this, this was on hard mode. How did I not notice that? Yeah, he's like it's like a, like an aerosol can, and it's really weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's also a, a pretty decent speed run outside of the very opening. Um, it's somewhat different in terms of the strategies, but I digress. We're going to be moving on to the very next uh, enemy, the next subordinate. And this is the most dangerous one because this one actually was the one who we learned killed our mom, which is not very cool of him. So welcome and meet Chopper. Chopper is a guy who likes to chop things with his axe. Again, they, they were very unique with this. Also, a fun fact, his voice actor in the game is different than his voice actor in the cutscenes. And it's like, it's oh, not nice even trick. like... Yeah. Oh, nice trick. Yeah. Oh, nice trick. It's like, <laughs> it's not even the same, like, like, similar voice actors doing the same voice, but they're, like, different. No, they are, like, going for completely different tones between the gameplay and the actual cutscenes. So we are now in the sewers. Um, this area is kind of wonky. Um, Chopper, though, is pretty consistent here, actually. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing some very specific movement in order to get him against this wall. So when we pick this up, we can loop around him. Um, he is random in certain areas. Um, however, usually we can get around him. At least I hope we can. Uh, that is actually... That is actually good because when I was running this game, I just I just ran a straight line towards the cabinet. I didn't even think to do that. Yeah, it definitely makes it a little bit easier. Normally, he actually swings at us, 
Um, and then you can get around him as he's swinging, but there he just kind of followed us along. He's just kind of, you know, on our trail, just kind of saying hi, you know. Saying, what's up, GDQ? Good to see you. So this is another one where the character's camera change will spawn him in. So oh, we're going nice to... Trick. <laughs> yeah. And again, he's just like Corroder. He doesn't like uh, taking baths, so we throw water on him and he turns into a whirlwind. Also, I have one more. Demonic, can you say that this is an urgent time? Ah. Uh, I'm all out of form, so I don't really had that one. I had one more and I wanted to use it. I can't fit in like Jukebox here or anything. There's no Jukeboxes in this game. Yeah, I understand. It, it's, it, it's like telling you to hold in a sneeze. I know you just can't do it. <laughs> Well, exactly. It's an urgent time, though. It fits. And I have to get booed once per show. <laughs> All right, so we have a little bit of, of a uh, puzzle right here. We got to connect the wires together. I don't think this is very safe, even with rubber gloves. I'm not an electrician, though, so I could be wrong. Maybe it depends on like, the thickness of the rubber gloves, perhaps. Well, yeah. you have to, it's ruder powers. It's magic. I can't get away! Oh, well, uh, that's bad. Threw that a little too early, but should be okay. This could get a little dicey. Yeah, it depends. Uh, we need to get, so there's an upcoming area oh, nice where, uh, there it is. <laughs> oh, nice trick. <laughs> uh, so there's one area that's coming up. If he spawns in front of us, we might be in a little bit of trouble, but if, uh, if he doesn't, then we should be good to go. One of the problems with this area is, like you saw right there, it's very random where he ends up. Sometimes he's much closer, like he's on the stairwell and you can see him coming to you. Sometimes you're just having to throw him completely blind. But uh, we should be fine. Also, imagine being a ghost wandering for almost eternity because you can't find your glasses and they're only 10 feet in front of you. <laughs> like, literally the glasses were over there and then we just had to return them back to the corpse. I mean, like, okay, I, I use glasses too. I, I'm as blind as that, but like, Catch! you know, you really could have like thought that through a little differently. <laughs> but just imagine that it's like, I, please find my glasses. And then the person just like leans over and picks them up off the ground right next to you. All right. So if he spawns in front of us, this is bad. If he doesn't spawn in front of us, this is okay. No, actually, wait. No, we should be okay. I think so. I don't know. We'll find out in a second here. <laughs> uh, Alright, he spawned behind us. We're good. So sometimes he'll spawn in front of us here as we're running back, and that's kind of a problem. But, uh, we're okay now. So we have turned on the power, we turned on the electric key card reader, and we have the key card. We are good to go. Is he? There he is. Hey, bud. Oh, he actually, like, stopped for you just there. Yeah, his AI is can be very aggressive at times where he'll, like, just run around a corner and immediately slash you. And it's like, oh, all right. Cool. Thanks. Does he have Does he have an attack animation? That oh, he nice can, trick. Uh, <laughs> that he can use from like, a, from, like, a full running animation? What he'll... What he'll usually do is he'll immediately start the one where he'll, like, swing in a 360 around him. And that can, like, definitely hit you almost immediately before you can throw the water. Also, we were going to pick up that arrow. Yeah. Alyssa's extendo arms. Yeah, just pick it up, pick it up right through the ground. Apparently, if you, uh... You only need to be on, like, the correct X or Y coordinate. Z coordinate doesn't matter for picking up items. Yeah. Also, hey, we're back in our house, but it's a little bit different. So in this upcoming cutscene, we learned that our grandfather, who we love very much, um, actually murdered our father when we were a baby by uh, magically twisting an axe around to aim at a specific angle and then pushed our father off onto it. I don't know how he used his teleportation powers to make it change, but that's what happens. But here we go. We have the Chopper 1 fight. This one is essentially random, but it's actually a pretty short fight, thankfully. And he isn't 
too bad. So we need to bind him. Oh, that's good. Almost. Come on. Ah, oh, come on, Chopper. Work with me here, buddy. You can't get away. There we go. That's there what I knew. Are, there it is. Oh, almost. Yeah, this is kind of an awkward angle, but this works. Yeah, see, it's like it's like if the tether point is like behind a column or something like that, then then it like truncates the number of possible places that Chopper can move. Unfortunately, yeah. You can't like, get away. Pull back that way. Yeah, this is it's a like weird run is. killer. Yeah, timing, timing, timing has to be kind of exact. But also, you yeah. can actually use like fewer, uh, fewer tethers. Like the 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 idea behind squeezing off a spirit bomb yeah. is that you have to make the you have to make the boss completely immobile. And so, if you if you're able to, with some luck, uh, tether the bosses around like uh, around like certain angles, then you don't need like five or six tethers you probably just get away with like two or three yeah so like the idea is you're supposed to tether them on one side tether them on the other side and then they end up in the middle and you tether them there um uh, in most boss fights it's not worth doing that um very specific strategy because it's really hard to manipulate them into that angle on purpose um with the exception of one and that's going to be a boss that we'll be seeing later on um but here we go you're i hope you're used to this track you're going to be hearing it for the next like five minutes it is the worst track of the game. I was about to say, uh, apologies for that. It sounds like a mosquito just blaring for like yeah. a few minutes. But once we, once we finish with the mausoleum here, we get to go to the graveyard, and that's where the party happens. Yeah. I, I, hope, I, hope, I hope the GDQ tech wasn't like, oh my god, what's that buzzing? Is this like a tech issue or an audio issue? No, it's just, it's just the game soundtrack. So now we're in the mausoleum. This is a uh, crypt that holds um, dead rooters who are essentially illicit ancestors, which makes this area more weird because these ghosts are hostile. Oh, I'm gonna get grabbed here, that's okay. Oh yeah, I might glitch it so I don't get grabbed. Let's see. I heard the noise, so let's find out. Ah, we did, that's fine. Aww. That was a lot of the panic. Ghost, you huh. know what, Demonic, I can explain it to you. If you're wondering why are the ghosts mad at us, it's because they have to hear the mosquito. That is true, There's that would drive time. me insane, for sure. Maybe maybe the mosquito flew into their ears right before they died. And so like that's part of their torment is to just hear the mosquito over and over and over again. Also, as a quick question that I do see it in chat, uh, with the GDU Hotfix shows with speeders and code and many of the other ones, uh, the runs are indeed live. This is a live run. However, chat is actually pre-recorded. Yes, you are pre-recorded, chat. The run itself is live though. We are responding to this live. Uh, if Demonic goes a certain directions and does certain things, he's doing that as we speak. Yes. But mm -hmm. I, I, I can see you dashing time. in. Cat is pure recorded. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> so the ghosts are, are random. There's a uh, reddy, bluey, and yellowy. Um, reddy is pretty nice. We don't see much of them. Um, bluey is pretty chill for the most part. Yellow can be kind of a jerk sometimes, though. Also, uh, holy water works on ghosts, even though they're temporal and can face through walls. <laughs> Again, I don't know. If, if anyone comes to my chat and has any questions about the game, I will do my best to answer them. But for the most part, that is going to be the answer that you'll be receiving. Also, a quick thing to note is you've been seeing me uh, pick up these repellent arrows, and you're going to see me pick up binding arrows, which are red later on. I need to pick these up in a certain order because I actually cannot choose like, oh, I want to use a binding arrow now. You have to use them in the order that you pick them up. So we want to pick them up in a very specific order for a setup later on with a few of the bosses. Because for the next couple of bosses, we're actually going to start using them um, for certain fight manipulations and to get through them as quickly as possible. So uh, keep that in mind, chat. Oh, I thought I could get around him. That was a close one. It's all—it's also completely random. 
Sometimes they are super far in here and they like totally ignore you. Sometimes they're in that hallway and they're just like really, really wanting to give you a hug. I mean, you know, you're their great, 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 great granddaughter. Like, of course they would want to see you. And don't worry, chat. We are almost done with the buzzing. I promise. We are like right there where we just need to put this last reader stone in and we'll be out of here. When are you getting your uh, your holy water refill? So we grabbed that on our way towards the graveyard. That's fine. Oh man, I even splashed too. Uh, we're gonna be getting that towards the graveyard. So the graveyard is the worst chase section for a very specific reason. And we can't actually use our holy water charges in that area. It would literally cost us minutes to refill them. So because of that, we kind of just have to hope for the best and use items in order to make up for that. And you'll see why we can't use any holy water charges in just a moment here. But I also am gonna grab uh, this holy water right up here before we go into the portal and grab the uh, sigil of light. There we go. So keep that in mind, chat. And again, another thing with the panic is even if they swing at us, they can still give us panic. So that can definitely be a problem later on. But thankfully, that's actually why we've been picking up a lot of these items um, for this specific fight alone. We literally don't use them anywhere else in the entire run. Uh, so we picked up a couple of times though. The lavender water, that'll reduce our panic. And we picked up an invisible ring, which turns a list invisible. All right, so we are going to the graveyard now. Hopefully this track stops. We use two charges there to um, power up the, the portal. Then we use two charges here to also power up the portal on both sides. Now we only have one charge. However, we need that one charge to activate an item up, coming up here in a moment. So keep all of that in mind during this area. So I'm going to be moving through this in a very specific way, but this is essentially where... Alyssa learns that Chopper has killed all of those ancient rooters. He's killed our mom, and now he wants to kill us too because he's a bad guy. So what we're going to do here, the moment I see cross about that hedge and he swings, I'm going to use an invisible ring, invisibility band. That's going to cancel out his attack and make sure we don't gain any panic from it. It's also going to make us invisible. Oh, nice trick. <laughs> and he's going to say that. I mean, this oh, is a pretty nice, nice trick, trick. turning uh... invisible. Like, I would be impressed if someone could do that. So another Good. problem and the reason why this area is difficult is the backtracking. We have to backtrack and pass through him multiple times. Because we, we need to activate these lion statue things in a very specific order. Yeah. I'm actually surprised he didn't like, use any other attack. He just threw an axe. Yep, that was a little weird, but I'm not complaining. Uh, the axe hit will panic us, obviously, if it hits us. However, um, if it misses, then we're okay. All right, hopefully we this one more time. Oh, that's fine. You can't get away. Pretty sure you have like full-on momentary and vulnerability while the uh, only the lot of the water proc is active. Yep, exactly. So that's another good thing about it. All right, we have the Compass of Shadows. Now we just need to get out of here. So let's see if we'll give us some good luck. He turned right there. That's actually really good. Throw some at us, please. That's also catch. fine. I don't want to catch. I'm terrible at it. Also, I've actually had that axe hit me as I was going through those gravestones. It was kind of funny. Very annoying because it killed my run, but still. <laughs> he, uh, he could be surprisingly accurate with that thing. And we are out of there. That went very good. You don't, you, don't, you don't play Ultimate Frisbee, bro? <laughs> Sorry, man. I never uh, did that dude, dude bro thing in college, and neither is Alyssa. <laughs> she, she has other talents, like magical schoolgirl stuff. She's got speaking, more magical schoolgirl stuff to do. Yep. So speaking of magical schoolgirl stuff, we're going to get something here very nice in just a moment. Uh, but right, 
real quick. We're gonna fill up our water here. There's actually a faster refill in the hospital, but I'm so used to this one that's basically muscle memory at this point. And also makes it so we don't have to deal with a ghost later on. Here we go, we put in those compasses. Perfect. And now we open up another portal. I'm not a scientist, but I feel like traveling through interdimensional space probably isn't very good for you to do on a consistent basis. Like, like one or two times is probably fine, but you know, this is a lot going on. Magical girl powers, that's all we, that's all we need to say really. Yep. So now we are going to be getting another item of significant value to cleanse the spirits and defeat the boss. This item is going to be a uh, Ruder arrow. We can't actually use this in, in a boss fight or battle. I thought we could when I was playing originally. I was like, ah, oh, cool, I can use this golden arrow and I'll save it for the final boss. And nope, it's just a cool key item. But we do get a, a nice item as well coming up here. So this is a binding arrow. Um, you've seen me charge up my arrow shots to bind the enemies earlier. A binding arrow will bind them immediately without any charge up. Also, oh no, it's, oh no, we're, the bridge is falling. Gotta get out of here. Uh, I haven't failed this yet. I can't wait for the day that I do. It's gonna be a very sad day. But here we go, we are on to Chopper 2's boss fight. We haven't defeated him just yet. Now this is the, kind of the coolest one because it's the best R and like the best manip we have with an enemy. So what we're going to do is um, counter attacks in this game actually give your character a little bit more power if you do them. It doesn't come into play too much, but this is an example right here. So we have a repellent arrow on hand that we're going to use and we're going to use it at a specific time when he is attacking us and this will cause him to throw an axe which will allow us to knock him down because he is completely invulnerable until he throws that axe and we knock it back into him also i like how their light bar is a as a sentence so we need for him to run he swings he goes back like that Catch! and there we go boss fight is basically done and now that I said that, of course, I'm going to jinx myself. But it gives us time to bind him, and then we just need to keep on doing this. Sometimes I'll throw an axe. This is actually kind of good if he does, because then um, when we do our spear bomb, it'll usually kill him if he throws enough of them. Oh, we got some uh, trick shot. He's very fancy with his axe throwing. I guess if you have a couple thousand years to learn how to do it, you get pretty good. I'm glad he telegraphed the, the catch. It's very yeah. polite. Take this. Oh, okay. We're good. <laughs> I, I kind of panicked there because I fired a little too early, but uh, we're all right. The, they're just going to disappear from reality. Totally okay. Totally fine. There we go. Another spirit bomb. And that is Jobber 2. That was really good. That was probably like one of my fastest uh, kills on him. So there we go. It turns into a gem and now we have all of the needed Glovers. So we're going to head here and we're going to use the item in order to um, allow the Rooter Spirits to move on. And we also get to meet Dennis. You guys get to see Dennis. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited. There he is. Look at Dennis. That's our boy. Alyssa, wait for me! <laughs> I kind of like how he's very, like... He's definitely like a puppy. He's just following Alyssa around and, and you know, trying his best. Here we go. We are now going to be introduced to Scissor Man. You guys are excited for Scissor Man, right? Now, I want you to picture you probably are, are picturing one of two Scissor Men. You are either picturing the one from the SNES game, where uh, it's a young, young Danny Barros, if I got the name correctly. 
or you're picturing the one from Clock Tower PS1 slash Clock Tower 2, which is Edward Barros? No, I think I'm mixing uh, that up. So the first one was Bobby, the second one was Dan. Bobby and Dan, yeah. You're probably picturing that. This one's name is Ralph. Um, they did a little bit of a, de of a design change. One, he's no longer um, a Barros or a Burros. Um, and two, they, they kind of went with a different look for him. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see it here in a second. So our main goal here is to collect three key cards. But to do that, we need to travel to the mirror world. The mirror dimension is basically the same area, but reversed with a couple of different things on the other side. So we're going to crawl through here. All right, are you guys ready for Sizzle Man? This is the moment y'all been waiting for. This is a clock tower game. This is what you wanted to see. There's Scissor Man. Hey, buddy. We'll see you later. <laughs> so they um they changed him a little bit, but he should be stuck in that dimension, so we should be okay, right? Oh, there's a Scissor Woman. That's a thing. So yes, we have two scissor people now. Uh, Ralph, and I actually can't remember her actual name at the moment. Jemima. Jemima, right. How could I forget like that? Like the pancakes. <laughs> exactly. I don't know why they decided to name a horror villain Jemima, but they did it. There you are. Oh, that might be a problem, but we have an extra holy water, so that's all right. We're actually going to use that right now. Oh, we have three. We are we're golden. We're totally okay. Also, as a quick check here, if you're watching this right now and you can hear this, type one in chat if you like pancakes. I love pancakes. I will try and find Me a moment too, to type one. One, 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 one. We got to type it, man. You got to type it. I may have typed it early, actually, because we're, uh, we're a little bit earlier, but let's see. Oh, God. Okay, that happens sometimes. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure someone, uh, one, a friend of mine was saying like, yeah, I never missed that one, uh, Mr. Silent Vid. It's like, yeah, I never missed that shot. And I'm like, I don't either. But sometimes instead of what happens is, or what's supposed to happen is she's supposed to stop in the doorway and then you hit her through the wall. However, sometimes like 1% of the time, she doesn't stop in the doorway. It's great. There's the one. <laughs> also, bye, bye, uh, scissor man. See you later. Also, again, camera angle chain makes us uh, immune. Fun stuff. So, on the other side of the mirror world, we, this actually is locked by a sigil, but we unlocked the sigil on the other side of the mirror world, so it unlocks it on this side. If Wait, Demonic, how did you type one? <laughs> I have my way. You're running. I played this, this game. This chat is pre recorded. I told you this. I told <laughs> you it's pre recorded. <laughs> It's showtime, though, Ang. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, someone asked if Dennis is dead. He is not dead. I, he is captured, kidnapped. So essentially, we learned that um, a evil entity wants our heart to complete the ritual that will allow them to get immortality by merging with a rooter. And um, they say that if we give them our hearts, they will release Dennis. So that is what we have to do. We have to save Dennis in the castle without giving him our heart because we kind of need that thing. It's, it's a little important. Just a wee bit. Also, we learned that our grandfather traveled here a couple of years ago, which doesn't really make any sense. Um, for reasons that the story kind of goes over later on. Uh, but essentially, this is a castle from a different time, but also not really. <laughs> also, hey, it's Scissor Man. So there's a kind of cool trick that you could do here. I'm not going to do it because I don't really get it consistently enough. But you can actually splash this Sigil and Ralph at the same time, and it saves you from having to use the water later on. But uh, I'm just going to go with a safe strat. 
So uh, since we're on the castle, I think right now is actually a good time for this part. So, Jamal, do you have any shout-outs you want to give uh, in any sort of way? Yeah, um, I'm going to give a shout out to some of the people that have helped me get into this game. Uh, one of those being Egdices. Egdices, sorry. Uh, Mr. Silent Vid, he's another really cool runner. Speedward, Dr. Wobblebombs, they were the ones that really pushed this game. Carsey, for also being one of those as well, one of the OGs who was kind enough to help with the, cou the uh, ca casting on the couch. And then the uh, Scissorman, who is going to be very annoying. That's okay, though. Uh oh. Good thing we have that stone. Yep. There we go. So I got a little distracted there. So we pick up that memo, and that is going to allow us to uh, learn that there is an area that we can get through later on that we need to get to. This guy is definitely not being played, but that's all right. We, we picked up plenty of lavender water. Um, so normally what I do here is I'll actually um, do something where I'll use the evade point to make it consistent. However, uh, I wasn't able to get there in time. Because if, if they're too close to the evade point, you can't use it, which is unfortunate. Here we go. We're going to pick up another arrow. So the old strat that Carsey you might recognize is normally there is a binding arrow back there that you go all the way around to uh, pick up. We actually have a different strategy now that is, it makes the boss fight slower, but it is faster overall. So you'll be seeing well, that later on. If it's faster overall, it's faster overall, huh? Yeah. Also makes the fight way harder, but hopefully I am practiced enough for that. Um, you might think like, We've talked about how Corroder's the hardest boss. We talked about how Chopper can be mean. So you thought, oh, the, the joke would be that the last boss fight is the easiest one. And it is not whatsoever. You can have your run die legitimately three seconds before the ending if you get bad luck and you aren't careful. But yeah, that was also kind of a good example to show you the panic meter where... Um, Alyssa starts like fumbling over herself and tripping and she'll also stand still sometimes uh, where you can't move her, which makes her very easy to hit. Um, the only advantage that it has being in panic is you actually move upstairs faster, weirdly enough. But there's no way to control it consistently and there's nowhere that it would really be that useful. So we picked up that memo. The only reason that we need to pick up that memo is the same thing to pick up the, uh, to get the code earlier on. Um, we use it to learn that there's a loose bar here and we can use it to get inside. Same thing right here. Uh, we need that thing back there, but we need to look at it first before we can go to the ash. Also, Scissor Woman, hey there. So we're gonna splash her right there. Again, when you're at an angle like that, where it can like really show on the camera, um, for whatever reason, it makes it so you have a higher range with the holy water, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if it's placebo, just like, cause we can see more of it, it's more obvious, but that's how it feels like with a lot of uh, camera angles and things like that. Here we go, we move the candle, that unlocks a secret door. Get a super, super long loading screen. That's fine. And we're just going to insert this crest right here. So we also learned that there are characters with A, N, and D in their names. And then we are also uh, a family with A, N, and D in their names. Also, and. she's in front of us now. Excuse me, folks. I did go. it. Hooray. Also, I don't know if this is intended, but Ann and D can be rearranged to spell Dan. Ooh, that's true. And there's your Clock Tower 1 reference. That's the only reason this is a Clock Tower game. No, 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 no. There's, there's another, <laughs> there's another, uh, uh, reference to it. There, there is something that's, that's like a Clock Tower-ish later on. I think... Barrows might actually be a mistranslation of burrows. We From my understanding, Dad. they're supposed to be, um, I'm sorry about that, but, um, 
We're supposed to be like descendants of the Barrows family, or like part of that long lineage, because it's like 15 generations and it extends. Yeah. But it's a loose attempt to explain a game that tried to just use the clock tower license. Yeah, even though it's like a different spelling of Burrows completely. It's great. There you are. Oh, no. All right. So that is the last stalker encounter of the uh, entire game. We pretty much don't run into them for the rest of it, which is nice. But um, the A and the D that we were talking about is, uh, I don't know what it is for the actual older uh, descendants, but it's supposed to be Alyssa, Nancy, and uh, Richard slash Dick Burroughs. They, they had to like make it work somehow. So that's kind of the connection there. And we kind of learned that our grandfather is not a nice guy and that he wants to uh, steal Alyssa's heart to become immortal. And that is the giant plot twist of the game. Our sweet old dear grandfather, who Alyssa cares for very much, is trying to eat our heart or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Also, that's a massive painting of himself. I want that painting. Dude, I, like, this is like a giant room as well. It's like a huge gala hall almost. Like, it would look big on a regular wall, but just even, even in here, it's just, it just must be gigantic. Let's put it outside my house. <laughs> yeah. Like, especially, it's such like a dumb, and it's like, he might as well be T-posing on there. There's so much dominance. Also, we learned that Dennis has been captured, but uh, don't worry, Alyssa's going to save him. And again, just want to mention that this also has a scissor man in it, too. That's another clock tower thing. It, it is nothing like the original scissor man. But uh, it's it's in there. He has a giant pair of scissors, or at least they're unhooked scissor blades. I kind of just realized that they're really not scissors. They're just two swords that they hold like scissors sometimes. I think it's definitely a neat design, though. And actually, a neat part of the game is if you ever look at the concept art, uh, they have a lot of different versions that they're going to go with. Uh, ultimately, they ended up kind of going with the this one design that we see in the game, which I. I, I like it. I think especially the concept art looks really good, and I think part of the reason it does look kind of cheesy is just the game's graphical time. <laughs> but, like, some of the stuff is actually way closer to, like, the original Clock Tower games than you'd expect. For sure. They just, uh... It, it's kind of weird. The main thing I think that also occurred is the fact that they brought, like... Essentially, they got, like, Steven Spielberg to direct the cutscenes, like... Um, he's known for his Battle Royale film in the West, but, like, in, in Japan, he's big for, like, a lot of his, um, like, Yakuza films. I believe that's the genre that he focuses on. But, like, they got a big-name director to do these cutscenes, and it at was, the time... Uh, Kenji Fukasaku. Yeah. And, like, at the time, he was, like, top tier, especially in 2002 when this wasn't too common. This was Capcom money, and they definitely <laughs> did not make it back with this game. This is actually the reason that uh, one of the scenario writers for Resident Evil actually uh, contributed to writing the scenario for this game. Oh, I didn't actually know that. Nice. Yeah, it was Noburu. Yeah, Noburu Sugimura. So uh, just kind of a weird add-on as well with movie directors and like Clock Tower, Clock Tower style of the games. Uh, in 2016, uh, the director of the Juon Grudge movies would go on to work with the Fumi Kono, who made the original Clock Tower games, to make Night Cry. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, the more I hear about Nightcry, the sadder I get. It's like, how do they have all of that brimming talent, and then you get Nightcry? It just happens, man. They had a lot of uh, people from Konami. They had a lot of people from the original Clock Tower games. Uh, Sam Raimi backed it, weirdly enough. Really? I didn't know that either. Yeah, his name's, like, wide in the credits. Uh, Masahiro Ito ended up doing monster design, which is probably the best part of the game, but... There's a lot that went into that. And then I know it's been mentioned a few times in chat, but Haunting Ground, actually, um, that kind of stems from this game because Capcom wanted to make another Clock Tower game, but they didn't want to deal with licensing. <laughs> yeah, because Capcom doesn't actually own this game. A lot of people think they do. They just own the producing rights for Clock Tower 3. It's actually owned by a company named Sunsoft, who hasn't done anything with it except, I think, a re-release of it on the uh, virtual store that you can't even get anymore, so... 
Well, they did something. Uh, in like 2015, they released the uh, 20th anniversary soundtrack. Oh. Th Did that's know it. That. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But this is the reason why Clock Tower, or why Haunting Ground isn't called Clock Tower 4. Because this game bombed. <sighs> so. I think this, yeah, this game, I think it only sold like. Didn't even sell like what a hundred thousand copies, did it? Not a lot. Uh, from my knowledge, it made less than a million dollars. Which yeah. is bad for a Capcom game. Also, this is like eight hundred thousand. Twenty-two thousand copies. So it had a very limited run. There we go. So that fight's actually unique in that you don't auto aim. It's whatever angle um, Scissor Woman is facing at, which um, can get very frustrating. But here we go. We have the actual boss fight now. Uh, Scissor Man, this is a strategy that I'm going to tr basically try to explain as best as I can. Um, so normally you need six charges of your um, your arrow to actually stun him. But we can kind of get him in a loop here where we hit him with that and then he comes over here and swings at us. All right, he was a little too early, but that's fine. You can kind of get him into a rhythm where he'll like constantly be attacking you from the right angle but I'm just getting bad luck. It's fine. Normally he'll try to like melee us and it makes it very easy to get uh, the first spear bomb on, but this works as well. So this is entirely a, probably a lie from my stand. I like to believe that this scissor man inspired Jared Leto's Joker. <laughs> it's about as accurate to the original character as Jared Leto's, so I wouldn't be surprised. So it's actually kind of a, not a bad thing, but like we kind of wanted him to be bound a little bit more than three times. Cause like Carsey was talking about earlier, the reason that he uh, got spear bomb there is cause even though we only did three charges, they were at like a triangular angle, which makes it so they bind immediately. But um, yeah. cause we don't want to do a second spear bomb attack because it's really slow and he'll like end up with only like 10 HP. But if it happens, then it happens. Miss me. Ah, we did it again. Oh, well. You guys get to see it twice. It's really cool. I don't think no one's gonna mind that. I wonder, is it just, like, funnel in from the ceiling? Or, like, does it, like, have a stationary point at top where it's coming out of? I like to imagine it's just crashing through, like, 20 layers of the castle. Just all, all the brick to hit him. And then it just magically repairs itself. Ugh. I just think <laughs> it just, follows oof. Final Fantasy logic where everything just... Where the where 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 they're just like summoned to another world and you know just giant energy ball attacks basically. Yeah. Also, we've waited uh, the whole game for this moment, but it is a clock tower game after all. <laughs> we have finally made it. We are now ascending to the clock tower. We're not there yet, technically, <laughs> but we're getting there. Wow, it all makes sense now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is what this entire series since the original game was building up to. This very moment. This was planned from the start to end like this. The real clock tower was the friends you made along the way. Here we go. We have saved Dennis, and now we are going to confront our grandfather and stop the ritual. Even though we could also stop the ritual by just leaving. And that would completely ruin his plans. <laughs> The amazing thing about this game is that all that had to happen is Alyssa just had to stay away from home. And and then it would have been totally okay. His plan would have been completely foiled and none of this would have happened. Well, my favorite part is not only that, but it kind of runs in the family that they're dumb because all the grandfather had to do was, wait, you got chased by a guy with a sledgehammer? I can't believe it. Let's wait in this room until your birthday and you'll be safe with me. Don't worry about it. I know, That's all right? he had to do. <laughs> We know that a lot of these enemies like to make a spectacle and it kind of bites them in the rear afterwards. But, um, you know, I think it's just a, a traditional thing. There we go, the clock tower. We, we made it, guys. We finally did it. Wow, what a clock tower. <laughs> I saw that one in the chat and I had to say it. Yep. We had Barry Burden earlier, so. Also a little uh, extendo arm action right there. But here we go, we can get back through here. We're going to pick up the last Melon Air of the game. So this boss fight with Dick Burroughs is the hardest one in the entire game, almost, because this one is the only one that actually has a strategy that is something other than just aim at him and shoot until he's dead. 
Also, yes, you heard that correctly. The final boss in this game is actually named Dick Burroughs. Yep. So... Like, that's not doctored. Uh, earlier in the game, you learned your grandfather's name is Dick Hamilton, and uh, the final, like, the guy who he's getting possessed by is named Lord Burroughs. They combine together, and... Yeah. Yep. And... All right. Uh, also, Fall Guys right here. You guys like it? My favorite uh, mini game game. But here we go. So I'm gonna let um, Exynesis, if you wouldn't mind, explain the strategy that we're gonna be doing here, so I can concentrate on doing it and not messing up. I'd appreciate it. Sounds good. So this strategy can go one of two ways. I feel the hardest part is phase one. Uh, fa the next two phases can go well as long as you don't get too unlucky and the timing works well. But I don't know who found. It. I think it may have actually been Carsey who found this. I remember I learned it from uh, him. But the whole thing that you do is you want to kind of go around this table in the middle, and then you kind of bait these uh, blah has. Also, yes, this is Cervantes from Soul Calibur. That uh, looks like it is. Uh, he's going to be dodging these, and he wants to get about five bindings. Uh, you can actually get these with a, I want to say a five charge instead of a six charge now. Uh, but once you get the five bindings, we're going to get our first spirit bomb. And this guy has the double health bar, and it will take three spirit bombs to kill. That's a lot of spirit bombs, right? So, after the first one, we're going to be using all the arrows that we grabbed from earlier to do a nice trick here. <laughs> uh, so, let's see if he gets this uh, the last one here. Oh, well, let's see. It can be pretty uh, rough because um, the little bindings do expire after a certain length of time. We got Spirit Bomb number one. Uh, so, this will be the kind of time to chill. Uh, the next one, you're going to see him get one binding, and then he's going to go absolutely ham with his greens and reds. And you'll kind of just see him launching arrows into his spine, which I'm pretty sure would kill anyone, even if they're magic. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. So there's a uh, couple of strats you can do here. Do um, you are going to get the puddle of uh, blood on the ground that'll trap you, or you will get a the blah, huh? Uh, what Demonic wants to do is he wants to get a one binding so he can get into place, and then he wants to go behind him so he can get some nice uh, shots into him. Uh, what this is going to do is both knock him back and bind him. The greens knock back, and the reds knock back and bind. Uh, getting him kind of trapped between these uh, will get a perfect free binding, and all he's going to have to do is... Spirit Bomb. He's going to be doing this one more time, and if he gets this, it works. Also, yeah, you only have the five charge this fight. Like, Corroder, six charge. Chopper, six charge. This man, Ralph, couldn't be uh, five or six, depending on how you hit him. Um, Sledgehammer and the final boss are the only ones you need a five charge, and it doesn't make sense. Uh, Demonic's man is really easy, by the way. Normally, for this fight, I watch people literally chip him down for, like, half an hour and then die, and then have to go another half hour of, like, chip damage. Uh, this way is much more efficient and probably a very fun way of dealing with the final boss. Yep. Alright, we should be almost done after one more binding. There we go. And he's not going to be dead just yet, but we have one more repellent arrow. And that should push him over the edge. Also, it's worth noting that if he grabs us, he gets super powered up with a melee. So that's why I've been very far away from him and baiting out his ranged attacks instead of his melee ones. All right. And uh, time, is, I, time is not done okay. just yet, though. Got to one pass him one more time. If he does a melee attack, really bad RNG. If he does a ranged attack, we're good. No I have lost runs from him doing a melee attack there. And time. All right. Ooh, that's pretty good for, especially watching the cutscenes and some of the RNG we got. I'm yep. happy with that. Not bad. Also, just enjoy the weird combination of like anime and Saturday morning cartoon. I, I did a, I did this game at a Devil May Cry marathon where I showed the cutscenes and they said that this is legitimately a Devil May Cry game. So. That explains the ending. Just <laughs> I don't know why he growls at us. He's 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 actually Wario. <laughs> also, this is your grandfather of all things. Yep. While you're holding your mom's head that's been encased into a statue. And then he falls on the clock tower three. Go. Aw, oh, happy ending. Even though our house is destroyed, our mom's dead, and uh, we're, we're gonna, yeah. Happy ending still.
Also, I love that uh, it's gonna pop up in a moment here, but just look at the, like the, uh, it's like a little picture frame of like the family on a desk. <laughs> just a happy family. Uh, yeah, Burroughs literally said that's Not enough anymore. playing happy family. Yeah, that was Clock Tower 3. Um, while we're here, Demonic, people want to watch you on Twitch. They uh, enjoyed the run. Where can they find you? Yep, you can find me at twitch.tv slash demonicrobots. I stream a bunch of games from horror games like this one. My main one is a really cool run called Control. Um, if you're interested in uh, seeing that, uh, it's a very cool speed run. I recommend checking it out. Um, also want to give a quick shout out to Carcinogen who is here. He hasn't done this game in a long time, so I appreciate him coming back and, you know, uh, getting ready, helping out with the runs. He's, he's a big, like, OG Clock Tower guy, and it's uh, really nice to have him uh, commentating and helping out for me. Quick question as well, Demonic. Um, yes. During GDQ, you did a, you did a game, right? Yes, I did uh, We Happy Few and Dishonored 2. Dishonored 2, you say? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, in a few a few moments, I will have some news for you on that. But for right now, let's enjoy the ending. Yep. We did it. We did it. Woohoo. Dennis is saved. That was the most important part. I know you guys were worried about Dennis. I got good news. He's okay. He's all happy. And we get the fade to black. But that's not the most important part. Because the most important part of this entire game is our high score. Everyone knows that's the most important thing in any game. And so we need to see what our reader points were. 73,960. So feel free on your next playthrough of this game to try and beat that score. We literally have no idea what it means, what it's for, how they calculate it, but uh, good luck. All right. Well, that was Clock Tower 3. I want to thank you once again, Demonic, for being here, for doing the run. I want to thank you as well, Carsey, for being here. Hey. Thank you for having me. And now me. we're um, we're about wrapping up for the show, but uh, before we do end, I just want to talk about a couple of things. If you guys would like to join me for the outro, you're more than welcome. Sure. All right. But yes, everyone, I want to thank you all for watching this Clock Tower uh, Hot Fix on Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, we do a lot of horror games here. We're a bi-weekly show. We do uh, different types of horror games every week. Usually we try to focus on a fun theme. Uh, as a brief hint, uh, in the next episode, we're going to be uh, getting a little bit hotter I'll let that kind of ruminate as it is, but we'll see what happens then. Uh, as well, we actually do have a Resident Evil special coming up soon, and one of our uh, commentators here, Carcinogen, will actually be a part of that. We'll have a, a long day of Resident Evil games on March 13th. And as well, um, I've been your host, Dick Dysis. If you have enjoyed the show, uh, feel free to check me out sometime as well. We do host these all the time. Uh, but the reason why I asked about it, the reason why I asked about the... Uh, the GDQ thing is because tomorrow we'll be having the first step starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, where Hobbs and Keys will be racing in Dishonored 2. Uh, if you want to watch good Dishonored 2 gameplay, go check out Demonic Robots. He's a very good runner of this game. If you want to watch two runners teach you how to get into speedrunning, join us tomorrow there at the Games on Quick channel. Uh, we are going to be finding someone to raid, so we'd love for you to join us. We already have the raid message planned and uh, the person, so I don't want to thank you once again, and I hope you all have a wonderful night. Thank you again.